There's an army rising up. There's an army. They are rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army that God is raising up. There's an army they are rising up. There's an army. Rising up, they will break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah! I have found David, my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. Find men tonight, oh God. Find men. In the name of Jesus. So we come and we enter the throne room. And I bow. The Lord shows me a stream that flows. I see the visions of the Lord. A stream that flows. And the Bible says, Whose streams make glad the city of God. Lord, I pray that this river will flow to us and cause us to hear the sound ancient sounds in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you for the privilege hallelujah amen let's sit down God bless you we'll be very fast Jeremiah 29 I'll just lay a few foundations Tonight, I, I just want to, I want to initiate us. That's what I've come to do, to, to plant a hunger for spiritual things in our heart. And then we'll be able to build on the theme of the conference. Verse 13, Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Hallelujah. I I have been I'm one person who is very particular about our passion and our commitment towards spiritual things above and beyond our desire to be anointed to be men and women of God. I have found out that the reason why many do not experience the fullness of, of God in their lives and their ministries. It's not because we don't pray. 
please follow me. I'm laying a foundation. It's not because we do not fast. Um, there's no time in the history of the Nigerian church and the continent of Africa where we have been able to contend and gain mastery on spiritual things. I do not believe that Africa is ignorant. This is, this is a hub of spiritual truths. Is that true? Many men and women have been able to touch strange fountains of grace. People have been able to bring down dimensions of the realities of the Spirit. We, we are not lacking revelation in the body of Christ. That's, that's not the problem. I tell you this. Hallelujah. There have been all kinds, dimensions and facets of the accurate delivery of spiritual things. Ranging from healing to ministry, the prophetic, the apostolic. We must take our time to commend the current move of the spirit in the country. Anyone who says that um, the church in Nigeria is dead, is dead himself. Hallelujah. The church in Nigeria is alive. We can be better. But we must take our time to commend our alignment so far to spiritual things. However, there is a paradox that the more we understand the mysteries of the kingdom, the farther we are from experiencing their realities. Hallelujah. And so we talk a lot about the apostolic, the prophetic, the reality of God's life. Encounters, you know, walking in the anointing, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. But then we are able to articulate these things so meticulously built. We have taught series upon series on different dimensions of the kingdom. But the rate of our seeming comprehension versus the manifestation of their reality in our lives is where there is a big problem. And I want to just begin tonight by telling us why and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Any believer who does not understand the things of the Spirit is just lazy. There are tapes, books, is that true? CDs, conferences, prayer meetings, night vigils, apostolic gatherings spread across the length and the breadth of this nation. That you only need to come close to that environment and something will catch you. But why is it that as the knowledge is growing and increasing, there is a degradation from our spiritual standpoint. Physically, we are able to gain knowledge. Even those who are not born again. Gone are the days where someone will fall, for instance, in church and people will be wondering. Even a lazy believer who does not understand spiritual things has been inclined to that degree of awareness that there is a God who is mighty. Is that true? Politicians in the country have come to an extent where they acknowledge whether they believe or not, they have been able to acknowledge that there is a spiritual position that this country takes. But the problem is the experience of the kingdom. The experience of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And, and for a long time, I have been concerned passionately um, exploring why a man can talk about God so much and experience so little of Him. Isn't it amazing? And, and the surprising part is that the men of God who are bringing these truths are not fake. Are you getting my point? But one thing I have realized is that because of the multifaceted dimension of the Holy Spirit, it is possible for you to experience a dimension of His reality and be rich upon that strength and then be barren in other dimensions of His operations. Are you getting my point now? It was the prophet that began to give us a picture as to how the Spirit of God operates in the life of a man. I can be able to align to kingdom realities, for instance, in the area of, say, wealth and prosperity, and I can understand the laws and be blessed, and yet barren. That means my strength in an area in the Spirit does not qualify me to be audacious about other areas. I must submit as a child to allow the Spirit take me from facet to facet, from dimension to dimension, until every area of our Christian experience becomes strong and mature. And that is the ministry of the fivefold. To be able to, by reason of alignment, you see, I, I always say this, that 
that the hallmark of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is not signs and wonders and healing and deliverance. I believe in all of these things. But the true mark of one who carries an apostolic and a prophetic anointing is the ability to align himself in the spirit and contend for the mysteries that belong to a dispensation. For God deals with mankind dispensationally. And the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic, we are supposed to stretch ourselves in the spirit and receive the blueprint of God's apostolic activity for an era. Understand it and interpret it and also impart grace upon the people to walk. Because if we are not able to catch the mysteries and the realities, the Bible says, I will not be negligent to remind you of this, although ye know them and are established in this present truth. Present truth. That which the Spirit is doing at the moment. Not that which he did yesterday. We can take advantage of his operation with the ancient. And according to the consistency of his character, it can give us an idea of his operation. But the dynamic nature of God requires that we must tap into the mind of the spirit for a season. There is no guessing about what God is doing. The Bible tells us that the spirit of God can search the deep things of God. Hallelujah. So it's not just about Rema. It's not just about Greek and Hebrew words. It's about the counsel of the Spirit for the moment that is able to guide the people to partner with that which God is doing. Hallelujah. I say this because there is an excitement that I, I discern in the body of Christ. But if that excitement is not tamed, we will still get into another dimension of error. And it is the excitement of touching revelations. And so people are not as concerned as to whether that revelation has become life in them as much as dispensing it to be honored by it. You see that? And so, especially the young people, you see them around campuses, you see them everywhere. We are excited about getting revelation. Tapes upon tapes. And have you had this? There is a dimension in the spirit called this and that. The Greek word is called this and that. And you know, we, we build the strength of our anointing on what we think. The ability to articulate things and to speak. Let me tell you something. Except for the fact that there is a law in the spirit. That you only dispense things according to the degree of the life it has created in you. So you can communicate what should give life to people. But because it has not become life to you, it becomes barren. So you take a man's tape, but you cannot take the life in it. And as you communicate it, the people are hearing what should bless them. But the spirit of that communication does not follow it. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so we must settle, we must settle with God and make a resolution first and foremost, not just to be excited about revelation, but to seek Him. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. There is a law that governs encounters in the Spirit. And this is it. And ye shall seek me and find me and this is the condition when you seek me with what all your heart that means if you ever seek god in your christian experience and you do not find him then you did not seek him with all your heart the prophet here is giving us the condition that if you are to find god in the spirit then there is a system that probes every part of your being and until every one of that facet of your being cries to God, you will never find Him. You may pretend like you have found Him. You may act like you have found Him. You may build a ministry like you have found Him. But the Bible says, and you will seek me. And when all of you cries to me, then you will find me. The psalmist said, Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, Early will I seek you. My heart longs after you to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. That means what has been happening in church, let it become my experience. He says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Hallelujah. I told God certain things. I said, Lord, I repent from ministry. I repent from being a man of God. And I become an ardent follower of the things of the Spirit. 
Hallelujah. I told you tonight I want to initiate you. I want to infect you. Because some of us are just running. Probably you came here for this conference and you are hoping what new thing can I get? My fellowship is at the mercy of what I will receive in this conference. I have, I have circulated the circumference of all the revelation I gave them from January. And I'm hoping for something new to prove to them I'm still fresh. You don't need to be new. You just need to be fresh. And freshness is a function of your visitation of His presence. A truth does not have to be new to be impactful. But it must be fresh. Is God blessing us tonight? You begin to talk about intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you find out that immediately the spirit of religion dulls the appetites of believers. Then they find out that truly they are not seeking for God. They are just seeking for many things around Him. When people come and meet me, none of them ever ask about my passion for God. They are always asking about three things. How did you do it? How can I receive a double portion or triple portion of your anointing and all of that? And I tell them, please leave this place. Praise the Lord. And I don't mean to be insulting, except that, let me tell you something. You can, there are some experiences in the spirit that cannot be imparted. It's a pathway that you must pass through. So what you receive is a scar. It's a, it's a symbol of your consistency with the spirit. There is no bargain about it. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I pass through the classes. There is a scar, a symbol of consistency with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And so I just felt like just chipping this so that we will just pipe down and settle with God. Rema is great. Revelation is great. But let me tell you something. If it is not able to deliver the quality of the dimension that the Spirit is about to communicate, we are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Listen, that means a possibility exists in the Spirit that I can seek God but not with all my heart. And it's not that I don't want to. Let me tell you something. No man can seek God by himself. It is not given to us. And I will show you why shortly. I will lay a foundation and then we will pray. Hallelujah. No man has in himself the ability to seek God to the exact requirement that God demands. No. And there is a reason for that. First John. Us, Holy Spirit. First John chapter 2. John the Beloved, please look up, was a very strange apostle of the living God. He was called the Beloved. And the reason why he was called the Beloved was because he passionately loved God. Now watch this. When Jesus came to the scene, he met certain disciples. And he began to call them to follow him. Please understand. Notice the speed with which the disciples left all they were doing to follow Jesus. Peter was married, right? But he left fishing to follow Jesus. I've always been amazed and I've always known that there was something hidden. Now watch this. Time would begin to reveal their motive for seeking Jesus. Right? Because they had suffered a lot of um, degradation from the Roman government and they were hoping that the coming of this celebrity would advocate their release. Are you getting me? And so they were happy to be part of the move. Not necessarily an encounter with the man, the object, the move. And watch this. They began to see Jesus do great things. Calm the sea. Heal the sick. To an extent that they stopped Jesus' own mother and brothers from seeing him. They had become the protocol. The ministry was growing. Is that true? And their motives began to be revealed with time. Please follow me. These were the people who followed Jesus. 
you would see them and believe that these were passionate people. They looked like men of God. They looked like ministers in the making. But gradually, gradually, the dissatisfaction and the frustration. You see, Jesus is the wisdom of God. And he knew how to scan and allow the motif of their heart be revealed. Is that true? With time, they began to speak. We've left this fishing and this, this ministry is not rewarding us. Because as far as we can see, there is only one man that is shining here. His name is Jesus. At one point, they even took initiatives by faith and were disappointed. When Jesus took Peter, James and John, right? At the Mount of Transfiguration, the disciples had waited for this moment. Now the crowds had gathered. They, their egos were, were at stake. And they said, look, come on now, we can do this. And they, they wrestled with the epileptic person and they could not heal him. And when Jesus came in anger, they said, why couldn't we do this? So they began to negotiate because the frustration started growing among them. All kinds of carnal contention started coming in. Who would be the greatest? James and John secretly met their mother and said, this man will soon conquer Caesar one day. So can you go ahead of us and use your motherly influence to secure a place for us? So that when he conquers the Roman government, we will sit at his left and right. Is it not in your Bible? And they went to Jesus. And when she asked Jesus, Jesus said, no problem, the space is available. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized? He gave them the condition. They were not spiritually alive, so they could not understand. The, the, the dimensions of the spirit are there for the taking. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized? with my baptism. And when the other disciples heard it, because it was also their agenda, they were offended. Are you the only one who wants to sit in front? Eventually, they met Jesus and they opened up. Master, we have left all to follow you. Let's just be direct. There's no need hiding it in the secret. We have followed you for five years and nothing is happening. The, 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 the stretch in our patience has been stretched. And Jesus looked at them finally he gets to see it. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, no man who has left this and that and that for my name's sake, but he will receive. And they were comforted. Apparently, they didn't understand what he was saying. And then in John chapter 14, the shocker begins. Jesus now begins to speak strange languages. Let not your heart be troubled. He said, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Right? He said, for in my father's house there are many mansions. The disciples were not interested in any man. What are you saying? Don't confuse us. We have left all. We've looked for the trouble of the Roman government. Where are you going? He said, I go to prepare a place. They were not missing Jesus. They were angry for leaving what they felt was value to them and pursuing a man who is now about to leave them. Are you getting the point now? And then, when they came to catch Jesus, as usual, Peter was so confident because he believed Jesus would walk through them and even took the initiative to cut Malchus' ear. Please follow me. And Jesus fixed it back when they captured Jesus. What did they do? Please, what did they do? They had been with him for so long, but only because he disappeared for 72 hours, they became different things. Different things. Where was blind Bartimaeus when Jesus was on the cross? A man who Jesus so held. Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Who for 12 years Jesus helped her. Where was the man at Bethesda? Who would have died crippled. But he was healed. Yet Jesus was on that cross. And they all ran away. Where was Joseph? His father. I've always said this. I'm sure Joseph would tell Mary. Go and meet the rabbi that got you pregnant. I've always suspected that there is an inner story. A woman just says a ghost came to get her pregnant. Go and meet the rabbi. I'm not going with him. Only Mary and John went with him at the cross. Every other person ran away. Where was Peter who said, I will not even let you wash my feet? Is it not in your Bible? Jesus said, really, do you love me that much? And then Jesus died and they all ran away. And in John 21, Peter was frustrated and the disciples were frustrated. And Peter said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing. Let me not make it 2-0. I, I, I take it that Jesus deceived me. 
So let me go back. And the disciples said, we go with you. And while they went, the Bible records that they caught nothing. And Jesus stands at the seashore and says, little children, have you any catch? They didn't know he was the one. Right? And when they casted their nets and had a bumper harvest and all of that, Peter discerned that he was Jesus. He put his clothes and he ran and came to him. And then, this is the question, verse 15 of chapter 21. Jesus sat and ate with Peter and asked him a question. He said, Simon Barjona, lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me? To what extent have you given me your all? Peter said, I love you. Jesus said, understand my question. I've been with you. You made a lot of noise about your allegiance to me and I left for 72 hours. And it changed your life. It rattled your convictions about me. Lovest thou me more than this. Hallelujah. There is a principle to touch the true fountain of grace and influence in the spirit. Your all must be given to him. Otherwise you will never find Please hear what I'm saying tonight. This is a key that has made, lack of it has made the messages of many people barren because they are not preaching from the standpoint of death. You must touch that realm called Galatians 2.20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's not a statement, it's a realm. It's a dimension in the spirit where you get to. That whether they say Apostle Joshua, Bishop Joshua, Daddy, Mommy, Auntie, whatever they call you, it loses the ability to create an effect. Not because you are so humble. There is a posture you have taken in the spirit that only reflects His glory. <sighs> Hallelujah. So it's not just about doing things for God. It's not just about being an apostle or a prophet or a man of God or having revelation or power to heal and all of that. No. John, first John. It was that same apostle that spoke to us. And this is what he said. This is the predicament of mankind. He says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Yes, his diagnosis. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And he said, for all that is in the world, and he breaks them into three. Number one, he calls it the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Please look up. Let me explain something to you. There is a default state of man's heart that will not allow him to get all of God by himself. And the, the, the prophet began to speak that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Have you read that scripture? That by default, no matter how anointed I look, God's diagnosis over my heart, outside of his scanning and his dealing with me, is that my heart is wicked. And look, when God speaks... He speaks from the standpoint of his wisdom. He has a parameter that no man can use to gauge justice. So when God speaks, it's on the strength of his intelligence. And he says, the heart of man, any man, God, I want you to use me. He said, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who would have thought David, David, that great shepherd boy, who would have thought that David one day will kill a man and take his wife. The attitude did not just come in the palace. It had been lying there. Opportunities are the things that give life to our motives. I can have loss for women, but opportunity has not created it and I may lie to myself that I'm anointed. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so the Bible says, your heart can deceive you. Please listen to this teaching. It says the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. My heart can deceive me into thinking I'm alright. My heart can deceive me into believing a lie. My heart can deceive me into a perspective. I can convince myself. But here's what the next verse says. I the Lord, I test the heart. 
and I try the reins or the thoughts to give every man according to the reward of his findings. Meaning, as I begin to sing and worship, before it becomes acceptable, before it becomes an incense of worship, there is a probing of the spirit. And he will stand until he finds himself in you. That worship is corrupted. Is God speaking to us? And so it's not about doing things. It's about the state in the spirit from which those things are being done. Hallelujah. The heart of man is desperately wicked. One day David was moving up and down. The Bible says at the times when kings go for war, what was he doing at war? On the strength of the bounty of his royalty who could break spiritual laws because there was no man who could probe him. Is that true? But he would look at that shepherd boy and think that this was an example of yieldedness. This was an example of obedience. Whereas enshrined in him was a tendency for even murder. You will never know you can steal church money. Either because the money is not there or an opportunity has been given. Has not been given. It's easy to talk about the one who is stealing it. Until the day you are pushed to the wall and the situations align themselves compelling you to do it. Let me tell you, when you know God, you will know that, that that position of obtaining His mercy consistently is the default position of a matured believer. Matured Christians don't talk too much because they know the pinnacle in the spirit upon which they stand from. And they know that darkness is a step of God out of your life. I, I don't know my vulnerability outside of God. I don't even know what I can become. The only reason why I can predict a meaningful life is on the strength of the Spirit at work in me. My life has not gone through too many experiences to justify my ability to stand. It is only on the strength of the Spirit of the living God. Are we, are we getting this? The Bible says, Love not the world. The word love, there is the word eros. And eros is the word lost. Meaning by default position, everything that mankind does on the earth is motivated by one of these three things. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I'm showing you why people cannot on their own give God everything to see His glory. And then to bring you to a point where your passion for God becomes more than anointing and more than rema. It becomes a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. The word eros means affinity. That means by default, there is an affinity that I have towards gratifying this flesh. Are you getting what I'm saying? That mankind, aside from the agency of the spirit, is already in a predicament where this body has the ability to control the things that he would want to do. The lust of the flesh. So ordinarily this body will not want to fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? I would not want to abstain from food. When the body is hungry, it has a craving. It wants to satisfy the flesh. Is that true? When a young man sees a young lady, what happens? His body begins to suggest to him all the immoral things that can happen. That's what leads people to pornography and masturbation and all of these kinds of things. And you cannot imagine the number of arrogant people who are suffering under the whiplash of these things. Because they cannot humble themselves to the system of the spirit to tap into true grace that brings liberty. Not just grace as God doing everything to you, but grace as the dimension of the supply of the spirit that can position you in a place of victory. It's not every dimension of grace that is a gift. I've said it again and again and I've been criticized. We have said just concentrate on what God does. Sorry sir. The, the, the system of the kingdom will always require your cooperation. And there are dimensions of grace that is not a gift. It's an empowerment for you to cooperate with God and stand in a position that ordinarily you would not stand. Hallelujah. I counsel a lot of people and I am humbled. I'm broken. 
by how many ministers make a lot of audacious statements and you and how cheaply they are given to the affinity of the flesh i say this not in arrogance but to challenge us to posture ourselves there is something we are missing is god helping us paul began to speak the apostle himself in chapter 7 of romans he said that with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body that is my flesh i see another law walking in my members he was speaking as an apostle an authority but paul was communicating his secret frustration that while with my spirit i'm serving the lord i see that there is a contention of another law in my body so that the things i do not want to do i find myself doing them and the things i want to do i do not find myself and he's in his frustration he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death there is an affinity to the flesh that can pull anybody pastor prophet reverend whoever you are the flesh has no respect for status it has no respect for anything by reason of wearing a body we are disadvantaged in a position save for the ministry of the spirit to remedy that position number two the lust of the eyes mm. the bible says the eye is the light of the body you move in the direction of your perceptions your visions and even the physical things you see if i am blind i may never be able to see a sister not to even talk more of us she's a pretty lady and then the flesh says that all right so by reason of having two eyes are you getting what i'm saying there is an affinity there is a craving that can come into your life and so while you are passing and walking with god you see a BMW 2014 the moment your eyes saw it your spirit lands from the realm where you were with God and say come on Lord what is bad if I get this and there's nothing wrong in that I believe in prosperity don't get me wrong hallelujah but I'm only saying when it becomes an affinity an affinity is a lust right it's, it's, it's a desire that was not sponsored and initiated by the spirit hallelujah and so by reason of wearing an eye I can look at this brother's watch say my brother you are wearing a watch of 7,000 and covetousness begins to leverage on my eyes are you getting what I'm saying a pastor can stand and and look at a ministration and because he has eyes to read the letter he says ah there's a church inviting me in US and the Lord is saying go to one other church somewhere and he says Lord I, I curse that spirit that tries to stop my breakthrough because he has eyes so there is the affinity that comes with the eyes i can't stop my eyes from seeing and then the bible says the pride of life look the pride of life is not pride the pride of life is the sense of fulfillment outside god that you feel and have on the strength of something you have done if you have not done anything you cannot have the pride of life you can have pride but not the pride of life the pride of life is the satisfaction that you derive outside of christ that sense of honor outside of christ that sense of self-glorification on the strength of something you have done that is notable and commendable like a great ministry like a man of god who is known apostle right like all of these things these are the these are the positions that can bring the pride of life and you know people members and believers around sincerely have ways of pushing us to get to that point so somebody sends a text and say man of god elijah of our time your words open up the red sea and pass it into two i was at your meeting and i just stood outside and just standing outside my life has never been the same and the person is not lying is a sincere person acknowledging the investment of god's grace upon your life but then when that begins to happen again and again and your secret place is lacking it begins to build a wall that shields you right from the presence of god and all of a sudden like the rich fool you will build an empire and say my soul find rest on the strength of this ministry and the branches that I've created, on the strength of how many crutches I've gotten up, and the Bible calls it the pride. 
it happens so subtly, you may never know. That was why when Paul and Barnabas were called Zeus and Hermes, they rent their clothes so that there is no possibility whatsoever of stepping into the pride of life. Now, the pride of life is not, is not refusing an acknowledgement. When we came here, you brought us to the front and we came. I didn't deny. That one is, is simplicity. Simplicity is not the same as humility. Praise God. Every one of us by default, there is a contention to make one of these three things the object and the motivation of our Christian pursuit and everything that we do. Is that true? And so I can go into 40 days fasting because I stepped into a meeting and I saw a man of God move in a dimension of the spirit and I was told that the key to accessing that power is 40 days. The beginning of that fasting has been corrupted. And if the foundation be faulty, is God speaking to us tonight? So th that's why I told you that we are, the, it's not the absence of mysteries. We know what leads to what. So you finish the last fasting and after the 40th day, the moment you are fasting, you fall so cheap to the devil as if 40 days have been wasted. Let me tell you, 40 days is a long time to experience something. But because the motivation... So people go and sweat, praying and fasting on that studio to wax albums simply because a sister came and held the mic and the heavens were open and another sister said, look, come on, it's, my, it's time for my destiny. And now, I'm not against charging people and tell them you can do it, you can make it. I believe in all that, except for the fact that sometimes if we do not tame our motivations, they can draw people out of seasons into levels that they should not have gotten to. Are you getting me? And so I speak to you and I tell you, you have all things in Christ. And somebody gets up and his sweat is to buy a brand new car of 10 million. Then you become a thief. Then you become an armed robber. Then you will die. Then they will jail you for the rest of your life. Because there is a pathway. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. There is the building. There is the progression of the spirit. He measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet. Why didn't he just throw me into a river? After a while, he measured another thousand cubits. Is that true? This is how things progress in the spirit. And that means when I come to God, by default, he is not priority in my life. There are other things. But the, the principle of, of God becoming a priority is what the Bible calls death to the flesh. Hallelujah. And that one is not an invitation. Hallelujah. As we worship Him, as you sit under conferences and meetings like this, what happens is that God Himself begins to allow you, He gives you the opportunity to judge the faithfulness between Him and what has taken His place. Let me tell you this. God will not fight you for making him third or fourth or fifth in your life. He won't fight you. He will only give you an opportunity for that thing to try to be him and it will fail right before your eyes. That is the system of magnifying God in the life of a man. Hmm. So every time I say, Lord, you will lift me, what I mean is, Lord, you will use pastor to lift me. My, my auxiliary faith, I can jump and shout it, but the truth of the matter is, is tied to the prosperity of pastor. And then one time, after seeing all the visions in the spirit that he gave you money, he now tells you, I'm sorry, I may not give you anything. At that point, what you have made him in your heart and who God is stands side by side. And you see how that anything that stands close to God cannot stand. And then your pastor will go down the line and Jesus will move forward. Listen. The extent to which Christ and his purposes gain ascendance in your heart is the same degree to which the anointing comes into your life. I mean through grace, not all this nonsense people do around. Grace that produces an impact. Right? So it's not just about singing. You can come and sing a song before you get down to your seat, they've forgotten what you sang. Because you came from the flesh, you have a good voice, but you only minister to the body. But somebody can come and just sing just a hymn. 
and people will go crying for days because he was only a conveyor of a divine reality when every man stands you open people to your spiritual realm of existence there is no fake in it you can fake power but you cannot fake dimensions in the spirit we declare your majesty Kabiosi, we declare your majesty. Kabiosi, I declare your majesty, your majesty. It's your majesty. Is your majesty that's why we leave? Is your majesty? Hey. Oh, oh, oh. So I get to a point in my life where everything that I put my strength upon begins to fail. Hallelujah. My perceptions about God was to build ministry. You see, that's what a lot of people may have. You may have a perception about God that you have suffered in life. Things have not worked. So you are using ministry to prove to the people in the village that you are not a failure. And as sincere as that motif is, it's not enough for you to see the power and the glory and the grace of God in your life. And so God begins to edit. You cannot give God your Isaac. You can only give him permission to take your Isaac. It is not given to you. I tell you, if you believe you gave God your Isaac by yourself, you gave him Ishmael. The day you give God Isaac, you will know. Hmm. Hallelujah. At that point, you will die truly. Ministry or no ministry, it has no effect. Anointing or no anointing. At that point, your ego has been stung till there is nothing to sting again. Are you getting my point? That's the point you can buy a cloth of 100,000 and lie down and roll on the ground. Ah, yeah. Something has happened to you. Humility does not become mechanical. You have been threatened by Yirat Adonai. It's the fear of God. God has done things to you that has rattled you into reverence. And so humility does not just become some kind. No, 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 no. It's a realm. No matter how men clap for you, the memory of your experience with God keeps you. Even when doors open and it's not the season, you refuse entering them. Because you prefer to work with God. He said, I better be a doorkeeper. There are other options. But if God is in this, this is where I am. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. This is why we live. For your majesty. Listen, and let me speak to those of us who are in ministry because we are the most vulnerable in this day and in this season. You see, the grace of God brings a level of beauty and glory upon your life. It is so deceitful, men cannot see it. Even if a plate is broken, it can still hold food. You see, God has a way of covering your floor for the excellency of what he's doing for the people. Samson slept with a prostitute. Immediately after he went and removed the gate, God covered for him. He would have thought he was still going well. Giving him an opportunity to retrace his step. You may be doing a lot of things that are against the counsel of the spirit, but the grace does not reduce. It's not an endorsement. It's a, it's a communication of the mercy of God to bring you to a point where you will allow him to bring you into true spiritual dexterity. Rejoice not 
that the demons are subject but that your name is written there is a mystery there it's not just talking about born again it's not just talking about book of life like we know today as I am today I love God more than ministry ministry can pack up a thousand times for his majesty anointing can pack up a thousand times healings and miracles and fame and all of these deceitful things they can pack themselves all I am concerned with is my pursuit of his presence and I tell you as the deer pants after the water brooks when men clap outside I look and I wave them and I enjoy the glory and I shut the door and I say your majesty let the training continue let the opening up of the floors of my person continue. Not give me more anointing. The system of the anointing is the more you die, the more you live. The more you die, the more you live. This is the key to accessing ancient fountains of grace. This is why people fall down and get up and nothing happens. I vowed unto God that I will never stand before his people and waste their time. Never waste their time. It's a privilege that I be used to do the things that God is doing, contributing my quota to the advancement of his kingdom across the nations. And this is a commitment I have pledged in life and in death. There is no amount of lifting and money. See, this did not just happen by default. There is the dealing of the spirit. When you see a spiritual man, you never see a flaw in his life for a long time. Because in a short time, the presence of God will cut it away. This night, before we even begin to talk about the theme, I just want to call us. Lovest thou me more than this? MOG, I know that you have been in music ministry, singing ministry, apostolic, prophetic, but we came to this place tonight to first ask you, Lovest thou me more than Rema? Lovest thou me more than anointing? Lovest thou me more than prosperity? Lovest thou me more than the name? It's not a sign of weakness when you cry before God and ask that His grace will breathe upon your imperfections. It's a sign of great maturity in the spirit. The psalmist says, Search my heart and try my thoughts. They call me king, but what do you call me? Search my heart. They can call me Apostle Joshua Selman. And thank God for all of the great things but such my heart. What is your verdict about my person? Isaiah began to preach in chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If you are told Isaiah you are a fake man of God, he will slap you. But in the year that King Uzziah died, what needs to die in your life for you to see Clara? He said, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Mm. And he was, I saw the one I had been preaching for. He said, when I saw him, he was high and lifted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Isaiah by himself, without any man, said, Woe is me, I am undone. It was not negative confession. It was the reaction to the frailty of man meeting the holiness of God. He said, I am undone. I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. And the Bible says, one of the seraphs took a life coat. This is a man of God. Posters everywhere. Television ministry. Now he meets with God and finds out that the, the vista of judgment in the spirit is so different. A seraph. They didn't say it's a lie. You are an anointed man of God. We know. They took a coal because truly his mouth was not pure. And when they laid the coal, he said that your iniquity has been taken away from you. And then they continued what they had been doing. Who shall we send? While the MOG was preaching in conventions, heaven was asking, who shall go? What was he doing then? It's amazing how you can be doing a lot of things and heaven is still saying, where are the apostles? Where are the prophets? Where are the men who can align to the spirit so accurately to bring the things that the ancient brought? Gideon said, why have we not seen these powers That's, as we saw in our fathers? He said, destroy the idols. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that I stake in my heart 
sing that part. I will lay down my idols. Lord, I will lay down my idols. Thrones. And all that is taken. This is what the Lord taught me as the secret to his presence in the life of a man. The Lord taught me this by an encounter, by revelation. This is the secret of the ancient. They died and they died fully. Mm. For time will not permit me to speak of Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mount of light, women who received their dead back to life. From the teachings tomorrow, we are going to be examining on a global scale the current agenda of God. And as we begin to tie it with the things that happen between Samson and the Philistines, and to see the program of God and what He is doing. But tonight is to prepare us because there are graces and anointings that are coming to minister. And it's not just for us to rejoice. And after seven days, we say, Wow, it was a great conference. Be emotional about it for a few days and return to the things that limit us. This is supposed to give us an encounter. There are certain things that happen in the lives of men. They mark the date. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Can we pray for a while? Please, we are going to pray. Please rise up on your feet. Let me stop here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. desperation. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Oh, oh, oh. And say, Lord, like Isaac, I authorize you to take your place in my life. Let everything that does not name the name of Christ in my life give way. Please. It is something you have to pray. I believe we pray in this place. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, we desire to see your glory and your power. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must come to a point in your life where you see the need for God. Bigger than ministry. Bigger than money. Bigger than faith. You must get to that point where the passion, not for ministry, but for Christ, is rooted in. You must get to that point in your life where you love Him. I've gotten to that point in my life. I am telling you, there is absolutely nothing that will take His place. And trust me, with the little influence God has given me, I've been before kings, I've been before politicians, I've been before nobles. But there is nothing, nothing that will take His place. I need thee, oh, I need thee. 
every hour I need thee come bless me now my Savior you are Jesus Lamb of God Worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy. Cry unto him. I don't know how you will forget about ministry, forget about titles. Let it be a cry from the depth of your spirit. Take everything, oh God. Take everything. I surrender everything. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Will you give your life away? That's what God is asking you tonight. Will you give your life away so he can use you? Will you give your time away? Will you give your time away so he can use you? Will you give your pride away? Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, everything that has taken your place in my life, I declare that you rise above it. Go ahead and pray. Take everything, oh God. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despite the shame. Lord, we declare that we love you more than money, more than titles, more than prestige. I want you to leave this place, we'll soon round up. But I want you to leave this place with your hunger. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Listen, we were in a meeting in Kaduna. And while I was, the presence of God was so strong. And this, I don't write songs. I'm not, I'm not a musician. 
Hallelujah. These things just come from the throne. And while we were under an atmosphere of intense worship, this song came. It was my only way of communication to him. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Please give me for the mic. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me. You gave your everything. So I give. From the depths of your heart, Lord, take the ministry, take the fame, take the loss, take the titles. Use all of me, all of me. I give all of me. Listen. When you get to that point in the spirit where your life is offered as a drink offering, listen, you have touched the door of ancient power. You will see the manifestation of the grace of God in your life beyond what you bargained for. You will see dimensions of His grace. This is the key to visions. This is the key to encounters. This is the key to impact that will imprint a mark of God upon the life of a man. You must die. Is that state of death. It must happen to you. Brothers and sisters, listen. You have no right to call yourself an apostle and a prophet. You know, man of God, a lot of people just get up and name themselves. We are going to touch on it hopefully tomorrow. That you don't choose where you stand. The dealings of the Spirit shift you to that position. Hallelujah. Numbers 24, the Bible says how that the prophet stood and he saw that Israel was patterned according to their tribes. There is a, there is a spiritual order of arrangement in the Spirit. You come as you are and the dealings of the Spirit begins to tilt you and activate possibilities in you that shift you to a tribe in the Spirit. That's what identifies your place and your ranking in the spirit. So you just come by desire and say, I'm, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet. No, there is the dealings of God activates the wirings. It is his working in you that begins to call you to the zone, the tribe, the, the spiritual distribution of those who are of a similar grace and the anointing. Your job is not to think of ministry. Your job is to come to Him. And let Him be the one who will carry out the distribution. Don't come to God as a prophet. Don't come to God as an apostle. You come to Him as one who is desperate for more. For the more I know you, the more I want to know you, the more I see you, the more I want to see you, Jesus, more. Hallelujah. I want us to go back tonight and not be distracted. I want us to go back and use the opportunity to just spend some time alone, even if it's for an hour or two.
just forget about all your accomplishments and say, Lord, I mean business with you. You can just stroll out of your house in the night and sit down and say, Lord, do something in my spirit. I want to touch something that is ancient and something that is true. That in the course of this conference, as the words begin to come, may they create an alignment in us. The reason why God is bringing this kind of revelation is because He's set to do a great thing in your life. We're going to be teaching and then will be showing us the thing that God is doing in this nation and how that God is still searching for men. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise tonight. That it please you to be glorified by this meeting. We love you. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that your people will take a hunger back to their homes. Plant a hunger in them that will not be quenched. That no matter the distraction, that hunger will keep ringing like a trumpet in their spirits. Oh Lord, let it sound tonight upon their beds. As they sleep, may they hear songs of the Spirit. Melodies that will probe their hunger. I pray that they will return tomorrow with a passion. To truly learn under the feet of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we bless the graces and the men of God who have put this meeting together. Let it not be a waste. Lord, we thank you for that which you have begun. I pray that you sharpen us and align us. Look beyond our tears, O God, and go ahead with the pruning. Look beyond our, our frailty and go ahead with the dealings until we become men and women of true power in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just lift your hands and bless Him. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Once again, I appreciate the opportunity. Let's see how far God will help us. Praise the Lord. There are a number of things in my mind to share with us. We are building um, and I trust that God will grant us grace. Hallelujah. I want the impact of this session to be very constructive in our lives and um, I trust that God will grant us grace in the name of Jesus. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a prayer to Him alone. He who was the means and needs to come. I will sing before you strong forever and ever. You're holy. You're holy. Yes, you are holy. Open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Grant us the spirit of wisdom, revelation, 
grant us insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. Tonight I pray that we'll become men who are empowered by the word of God. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. God bless you. Malachi chapter 4. Let's, let's start from there. Wherever we can stop tonight. Malachi chapter 4. He's the Lord God Almighty. You're the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You're the Lord God Almighty. You're the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Yes, the earth is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Malachi chapter 4. Verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah. Hallelujah. Now, the key to understanding the, the character and the nature of, of Scripture is um, to be able to judge the communications of the writers of Scriptures from a prophetic standpoint. Hallelujah. Malachi the prophet begins to speak and he says, Before the Lord comes, before a manifestation of his presence and glory, Elijah will show up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he was not just talking about the man, prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. Are we, are we together? We... I want to begin to build the character and the structure of the kingdom because we are examining the goal of this entire teaching is to set us on fire. We tie everything up with the team of the meeting. But we began to build yesterday challenging us to love God and make Him a priority. And today we want to examine the systems of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That God will grant us understanding into the systems of the kingdom. Because you see, if you want God to use you in this time and in this season, I told you that it's not enough to be available. You must be usable. And being usable um, means that you must communicate sufficiently your interest in spiritual things. You must be able to communicate your desire to be featured in the program of God. It is possible to be alive and to be in the kingdom and yet not be featured in the things that God is doing. Hallelujah. And so we desire that as a people, as a church, as a community, that we be found to be relevant in the program of God. And part of it is to align with the Spirit and understand the patterns of spiritual things. 
Things do not just happen haphazardly. You don't just serve God carelessly. You don't guess the strategy. There is a blueprint. Hallelujah. There is a blueprint already. The Bible says the sons of Issachar. There was something unique about that tribe. Right? The Bible says they understood the times. Because in Genesis, the Bible says he made these lights. And they were to communicate signs and seasons upon the earth. That means things do not just happen in the earth. Hallelujah. Is that true? And so, tonight we want to, by the agency of the Spirit, tap into the wisdom of God and understand what is God's structure? What is His strategy? What becomes the lot of those who will be found relevant in this season? It's not enough to receive anointing and be set on fire and etc. etc. This is, this is the, the, the incubating room of the Spirit where you are taught the precepts of the Spirit. So that your advancement of the kingdom is both intentional and strategic. You are not guessing and hoping that you are right. Hallelujah. It's important that we realize that for a thing to be acceptable, it must be according to the pattern of God. There is an option. Cain and Abel offered sacrifices. Is that true? But one offered it according to his definition of what worship was. And the Bible tells us his sacrifice was rejected. And so, we must be able to buy into the mind of the Spirit and understand what is God's apostolic and prophetic pattern for the kingdom advancement that we so much talk about. All over the body of Christ, we are talking about building of the kingdom. You know, when we give offerings, we say, Lord, let this be used for the building of your kingdom. But then we need to understand the structure. And then we need to understand also what we are contending against. There are so many believers who do not... What is exactly against us? Hallelujah. Because you see, if you do not understand, you will not be able to draw the line. Why? We are in the middle of an ancient history. Are you following me now? A, a, a history of happenings, of foldings that predate our existence. And so for us to be current and at sync with what the Spirit is doing, we must sustain some kind of spiritual technology to be able to find out where are we in the middle of history. Why does the devil want to destroy your life? You hear a lot of people, because if we do not connect this, you will not understand the purpose of the anointing. Because we are all going to land there. This whole flight we are taking, eventually God will take us there. But it's not enough. A lot of spiritual things happen in church, but the impact is, is small because we, we are not building on a foundation. Why the healing anointing? Why the prosperity anointing? Why the grace? Why the power of God? Hallelujah. Why is the devil so determined to make sure that your life is destroyed? Why is he taking the issue of your walk with God personal? You must understand that there is an ancient story that is bigger than your family history. If you do not understand where the straight line is coming from, you will be in the middle of a puzzle. Why does the devil want me to get into corruption? Why does the devil want to get me into drinking and smoking and immorality? Why do I sleep in the night and see all kinds of demonic oppression? To what end? Hallelujah. Are you getting the point now? Why does the devil want to frustrate me? Why does the devil want you to fail? I mean, you see, our scope of dealing with, with, with evil and advancing the kingdom is very small. And so our convictions are small too. Because we do not understand that this is an ancient story. John the Revelator, when he was caught in the Isle of Patmos, he began to say this. He said that... Um, that old serpent, he said there was war in heaven. Hallelujah. And then he talked about that devil, that dragon that could not prevail. Michael standing against him, right? And he was cast to the earth and a lamentation was raised. War to the inhabitants of the earth. Is that true? There was no place found for him in heaven and he was cast to the earth. And the Bible says he came with anger and great fury. If you do not understand the string of events, listen, everything that has happened in this Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a connection of prophecy. 
And if we are to be relevant in this time and age, then we must be able to understand where the ancient came from. What was their motivation? What made them to be able to stake their lives unto death? Unto what cause? Then we will know where we connect as a generation. Hallelujah. If all we are going to do is to deal with sickness and deal with poverty and deal with failure, then we will never be that true army. We will not be able to represent the king as ambassadors. The story is bigger than poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying? The story is bigger than the devil refusing you to marry or stopping you from having a child. It's not about that. It's an ancient story. It's on the strength of that story you can speak to a devil and say be lost and he will leave. If your scope is just to make sure a cancer dries up, you are small. Are we ready for tonight's teaching? And so we, we trust that the Lord will take us back enough. Mm. Shrouded in this Bible are ancient puzzles from the encounter of Job. The mystery of the happenings of the life of this man called Job. The understanding that we have about the meeting in heaven was a privileged information that was given to us about the right, by the writer. Is that true? About the happenings of Job. Then we see a lot of other things that happen. We see Jezebel. We see Elijah. We see Moses. We see Peter. We see Mary. We see Jesus. Characters who were a representation of prophecy. And by the agency of the Spirit, our responsibility as ambassadors and those who will frontier the cause of the kingdom is to be able to gain an understanding into the exact plan of God, what he is doing now and that which is required of us. This positions us to truly receive the anointing and to utilize it. Hallelujah. Our ignorance about the program of God and the strategy for kingdom advancement is what has made us frustrated in the healing ministry, in ministering to people, and, and the thing that we have done in the body of Christ looks like our father told us a lie. Is that true? So you pray for a sick body, and then the person becomes sick again, and you don't know what else to do. Is that true? And so all of this confusion, if you really want to understand God, you must predate the Old Testament. If your journey about God starts from the Old Testament, you are not far enough. Because before the Old Testament, God was. And there was an agenda. There was something happening. And if the scope of your beginning of the seeking of God begins from Satan, you are still not far enough. Because there was a dispensation where Satan did not exist. What then was the plan of God? Are, are you following? Am I boring you? Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I submit to you, there are men who cannot be threatened by evil. And it's not about claiming it. It has become their revelation. It is, it is a current state of work on the strength of what they know. When they saw Jesus, they said, have you come to destroy us? They began to speak mysteries. They said, have you come to destroy us before our time? What time? They knew that the one who was approaching them had that intelligence to communicate. And he said, no, no, no I'm not here for all of this. Go. And they left. The sons of Sceva thought it was just about ministration. And they gathered that person and they, he said, Jesus, I know. They are standing on the strength of something. Paul, I know. He was given a revelation that empowered him. Where do you stand? If you want to be powerful, if you want to contend for the anointing truly, and you want God to use you, then you must allow God to teach you his ways. The Bible says the nation of Israel saw his act, the manifestation of power, but Moses knew him. He, he knew his ways. Hallelujah. And so the prophet will say it this way. He said, ask for the ancient paths. 
Where is that location today? That location called the ancient part. Ask for it. Seek for it. Mm. He said, when you have found it, walk in it and you will find rest. You will enter your Sabbath experientially. There are many things we claim. But we do not have the revelation that sustains their reality in our lives. It's time for our convictions to become our experiences. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, before the coming, it was a pattern that God was revealing to us. That before the coming of the Lord, every time a revival is about to break that will frontier the manifestation and the revelation of God. It says, according to the spiritual pattern, Elijah must show up. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, figures in the Bible represented both their personalities and the prophecy, the systemic prophecy around them. For instance, when you talk about Moses, there was a man called Moses, right? But there is Moses as a representation of the law. Is that true? There is Peter as a person, but Peter as a representation of faith. John as love and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, characters in the Bible also adumbrated the operation of God. An adumbration means a foreshadowing. So, you could study a character and there see the consistency of God's operation. That every time the Lord is about to show up in the midst of his people, before he shows up, Elijah must go before him. Who is Elijah? The Bible begins by telling us that there was a king. Now, watch this. It begins by setting up a governmental structure. Are you following me now? That there was a man called Ahab. Is that true? And then the Bible now begins to speak about a mystery woman called Jezebel. Right? That Jezebel was married to that king, the custodian of the government. And the Bible says on the strength of her marrying the king, she had authority and she oppressed the prophets of God. Is that true? So the character, the setting before Elijah came was a state of apostasy, a deviation from the patterns of God. Are you following me now? And so the Bible tells us that during her time, the prophets of God suffered. They had to run and hide. And then they were the prophets of Baal. You can see now, a mimicking of God's pattern. Jezebel was not a woman. Jezebel was a, was a system. Because you see her reappear in Revelation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so the Bible tells us that this Antichrist system encapsulated through different names, Babylon, Egypt, Jezebel, is one and the same system. It is the name given to the structure of the operation of evil, masquerading itself and evolving through the civilizations of mankind. One and the same system. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you do not understand this, you have no ministry. And are you following me? Because a minister is an advocate. You are advocating a reality, an ideology. And until you understand it, the strength to prove what you are saying is not supplied. And so we see that there was a system that was characterized by darkness. During the reign of Jezebel, the prophets of Baal excelled. Are you following me now? Their ministry prospered. Jezebel, who was a, a, an envoy of darkness represented in the seat of government. She built for Baal prophets. Men who, mediums who could communicate with that spiritual deity called Baal. And they dictated the happenings around the land. And then, when it was time for a revival to step in, and for the people of God to experience the power of God, in a very strange manner, the Bible begins by saying, And Elijah the Tishbite, where he came from we do not know. A mystery man suddenly appears, Shows up in the scene and Elijah the Tishbite. That man appears and all of a sudden we begin to see unusual happenings around, of, uh, around the life of that man. The moment he appeared, his appearance began to threaten Jezebel. 
right she sent prophets to go and kill him because it was a spiritual communication it wasn't about a beautiful woman the wife of a king it was about the continuation of an ancient story are you getting what i'm saying now and so elijah climbs up the mountain and they send a band of 50 men to come and kill him. And he said, if I am a man of God, let fire come. Fire comes, divorce the first people. Divorce the second people. And the third, they come and they use entreaties to beg him. Anyway, something very mysterious happened. Because Elijah was not in a radio station when he spoke. He said, there shall be no rain. Is that true? For a space of three and a half years. Who told Jezebel? It was Elijah. Because Jezebel was a witch. Now, don't think which I'm not, I, I, I want us to be matured here. Don't just think blood sucking and all of that. No, 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 no. Witchcraft has nothing to do with drinking blood and all of that. Witchcraft is a system that causes men to err using the tool of deception. He said, all foolish Galatians, he was speaking to Christians, who has what? Bewitched you. Are we learning something? And so Elijah manifests. And when he said that there will be no rain, it noticed that from his manifestation, it was not between him and Ahab. It was him and Jezebel. That antichrist system. And Jezebel vowed that she must destroy him. Elijah went to Camel. And he dared destroy and they caught and, and slew the prophets of Baal. Watch this. Did you know that in your Bible, Jezebel swore to remove the head of Elijah? Is that true? Question. Now, many years later, are you getting what I'm saying? A strange governmental figure comes called Herod. Is that true? And a strange woman makes sure Herod's wife dies and she marries him by another name called Herodias. But we see the manifestation of the same spirit of Jezebel. And we see John the Baptist coming in the spirit to forerun God again. Is that true? He said before the Lord appears, Elijah must show up. We see that pattern again. So Elijah shows up. The communication begins right from conception. So Elijah shows up. Listen to me. When Elijah showed up, a strange man eating locusts, right? Wild, you know, honey and all of that. And then he began to speak. I've said it again and again. John was not a baptizer. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. Because after he identified Christ, he never did it again. John was a prophet. There were secrets that were communicated to him in the wilderness. And watch this. Did you know that when Jesus began to manifest... Herod Dias again made sure that they held John and closed him. The story continues. And then, during the king's birthday, a young lady now begins to dance. Brothers and sisters, after dancing and dancing, the king is excited. And he says, ask anything up to half of my kingdom. And that lady goes back to Jezebel in the place of Herod Dias, And she says, I want the head of who? What do you do with the head of a man? It's not about the head of John the Baptist. It's about the continuation of an ancient story. Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means what is happening in your life in the continent of Africa in the is nothing new. Boko Haram and everything, they are just masquerading as different patterns through civilization. But it's one and the same line. And this is what I've come to open us up today. Let's pray in tongues for one minute. Just say, Lord, let, let this... Don't just get excited and jump for nothing. Open up the fountains. And Lord, grant us insight. Brandas kataba lata paka tebele de bosco prandos ke baria daba. Skalabanda prates kalebere de losuba. Hallelujah.
There is what you can know that will make you such a man of power and stature in the spirit. It's not about little dots of anointing or carrying seats around receiving double portions. I'm not against there are there is a framework where those principles are applicable. But let me tell you, through grace, to serve and represent the kingdom is a derivative of staying with the spirit until you learn the precept. I'm saying this again. I said it yesterday and I will repeat it. The greatest publicity of a man of God is to remain in the secret place. That's how you publicize yourself. When you stay and he walks upon you, he said, this is my beloved son. I attest to the fact that he is ready to move. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. And so, there are many things that happen in the Bible. Right? The contention of light and darkness. We see that there is an old story. I may not have time to begin to speak to us about this old story. For the average believer, our Christian journey starts from Genesis chapter 1. Where man was created. But you see, the story is, is older than that. Hallelujah. Job, a man who the Bible testifies that he feared God and eschewed evil, came to a point in his life where in one day he lost everything. The man who was the greatest in the East, he began to speak, he said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle. Hallelujah. He said, the young men saw me and bowed their head. The old men saw me and they stood up. Mm. I walked upon butter and I sucked honey out of the rock. Now that man had been reduced. Certain things began to happen around his life that he could not understand. And his friends came from different regions. The Bible said they sat for seven days and they could not speak. Stretching their minds from border to border to articulate why a man of such spiritual magnitude would be reduced to ashes. But the Bible tells us that once upon a time there was a meeting that happened in the heavenlies and Satan came. Is that true? And it was on a The Bible tells us that when Job was frustrated, he summoned God. Ha. <laughs> See, if you don't know the ways of God, there are things you read in the Bible that will scare you. Because the, it, the Bible says it, Job summoned God. And God came. Chapter 38 began their conversation. God was listening to all the blasphemous statements and then he came. He said, this and that and that. And he told Job, he said, guard up thy loins and I will demand of you now. He said, where was thou when I laid what? The foundations of the earth. Question one. Meaning that before the earth was ever conceived as part of God's strategy, he was still God. There are some things you know that will make you worship God. Are you getting me? And then the Bible says, where were you when this and that happened? When I laid the foundations of the earth. Now he uses a strange word. He said, when the morning stars and the sons of God are. Mankind was not created and yet the Bible was already talking of sons of God. Hmm. So you see. We are not going into all of those things. Sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It's an office in heaven. Let's, let's continue. We're not going into all of those things. My goal is just to show us a few other things as, as touching the kingdom. Job began to talk to the Lord. And the Lord started speaking to him about so many things. Are you following me now? And we began to see certain creations that we do not find in Genesis 1. And that tells you that 
before our dispensation as we know, God had been consistent. Listen, our Bible as we know ends with the beginning of another dispensation. What we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. We do not know which of them we are in right now and how many have happened before our arrival. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because there was a dispensation where Satan was not a factor. I hope you know Satan was created. See, these are the understandings that when you have, you will know that Satan is not the opposite of God. Satan is not in terms of there are two kingdoms, two great kings equally contending. There is one called Satan. There is one called God. Uh -uh. If that is your understanding, you will be short of true spiritual power. Because there was a time God conceived out of his infinite intelligence and Lucifer was created. But there is an old story. But I want to take us from where it concerns us. Hallelujah. Because you see from scripture, the first person to be in the garden of Eden was not man. The garden of Eden was not created for man. The first inhabitant of the garden of Eden was a man called Lucifer. Hallelujah. You know, I kept thinking about this thing and I was just praying. Can I, is, is it alright if I teach, Pastor? Yes. yes. I just want to make sure that we... <laughs> Man of God, sir, please help me. Praise the Lord. You see, in heaven, the object and the nature of your creation is according to your function and your office. Please, are we following now? So, according to God's desire, you are created and the name that is given to you describes your identity in heaven. Um, names in heaven is not like, I say John, and then you come. That's not the purpose of names in heaven. A name, how do I put it now? Watch this. A name describes your office, but in heaven it not only describes your office, it, it equips you for that office. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, there are multiple names in heaven according to the functionality. For instance, if you are going to the throne room, there is, there is, there is a type um, there is a type of garment, a description and a posture that you must take. Are you getting what I'm saying? I hope, I hope God is helping us. And you, you see, you measure age in the spirit by how much you visit the presence of God. That's how you grow. Are you getting me? So, the, the degree of your access, of your visitation of His glory, is how your age is rated in the spirit. Because there is no time. And it so happens that every time you visit the presence of God, you are illuminated. That is the sign. Are you getting my point? So, you can look at angels... And you can know them by the order of their creation according to the lights they emit. Which is a function of how many times they have had access to the presence of God. People are not always visiting the throne room. The power and the majesty of God is such that one experience will require a long time for it to crystallize. Before you are even positioned to take another. Is God speaking to us? And so... The Bible begins to tell us that this man called Lucifer, the name Lucifer means light bearer, the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. That was his office. And because of the nature of that office, the objects of his creation, you see that when you begin to read the object of his creations, light piped instruments, stringed instruments, and so on and so forth, were used and he was put in Eden, the garden of the Lord. That was his, his habitation. Hallelujah. And then, it was on, do you know what would have given Satan audacity to rebel against God? Man of God, think about it. What will give this cherub an audacity to believe he can be God? Don't you think this is what the Bible calls pride of life? Are you getting me now? I began to teach us yesterday, right? You cannot have pride of life if you have not accomplished anything. You can be arrogant. You can have pride. But the pride of life 
is the self-confidence you derive in yourself on the strength of something obvious you have done. Now watch this. Lucifer, by reason of being the light bearer, the custodian of the mysteries of God, had unusual access to the visitations of God. Now listen please. Because according to the arrangement of the celestial bodies, right? The angels, above them are the seraphs. Above the seraphs are the cherubs. Are you getting my point now? And then above the cherubs, God. That was the structure before man came. When man and women came, the structure changed. So the angels, right? And then we have the seraphs. The head of the seraphs, the cherubs. The head of the cherubs is the woman. The head of the woman is man. And the head of man is God. If you understand this, you will know why when there is a deliverance, nine out of every ten people are ladies. There is a mystery. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, what did Lucifer want? Listen, Lucifer mobilized a rebellion in heaven and he called Apollyon, Leviathan, Mammon, Baal. All of these beings were inhabitants in the heavens. And Lucifer mobilized a rebellion. Listen to me. The, the rebellion was to dethrone God. His manifesto is in the Bible. I'm just rushing because of time. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars. I will be like the Most High. Is that true? It was on the strength of his office as the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. And on the strength of that, he had access to look into the mysteries of God. And when Satan stretched that curriculum, he said, if this is all that makes God God, then I can be God. Are you getting that? His, his personality, Lucifer, was, he was the apex of the artistry of God. Because his object of creation re reflected his class. Even among the cherubs, he was different. He had unusual access to the throne room. And he excelled in light. It was on the strength of that. He mobilized them. And let me tell you, they were still inhabitants. Now... There's no time to begin to speak to us. There are different planes of the heavens. What the Bible calls heaven, right? The heaven of heavens. What Paul will call the third heaven. That's where God lives. But there are other planes of heaven. Is that true? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, what, and rulers of darkness, and what? Spiritual wickedness. Where do they function? There are still humans that go there today. By divination and, and, and sorcery. If you understand this, you will know that you do not judge a thing by the manifestation or the result. Because different planes in the spirit can activate different possibilities. When Moses threw his rod, Janus and Jembers, they also threw the rod. Did it become a snake? So, in the kingdom, as I'll be teaching us, I'm going ahead of myself. In the kingdom, the proof that a thing is of God is not if it produces result. It must be initiated and sustained by the agency of the spirit. Otherwise, it is witchcraft. Even if it is manipulation of correct spiritual laws. Listen to me. If you understand this, you will discern the prophetic. If you understand this, you will discern the apostolic. I can come by a strange power and get my brother healed and he will be healed because I tap from a true spiritual law. But it so happens that on the strength of the laws of the spirit, anyone with the advantage of being in the spirit can tilt these laws to work in his advantage. 
The prophet began to lament in Psalm 82. He says, they know not, verse 5, neither will they understand. Is that true? He said, they grow up in darkness and as a result, the earth is out of course. There is a spiritual orbit. It's an equilibrium that the earth was designed to stay in. And so by witchcraft and sorcery, men can tilt the earth to their advantage. This is what strengthens people like Boko Haram. This is what strengthens certain things. It's a manipulation of spiritual laws. When you understand this, you will know the strength of the church and the fact that we are not just weak, that it takes more than sword to command victory. It's on the strength of an operation of the spirit. We can manipulate things according to the counsel of God. This is what it means to be the light and a city on a hill. Praise the Lord. Are we getting blessed? Now, where did the problem of Satan and man start? What is the problem? Why does the devil want to destroy this brother? Our brother gave a very powerful rendition. Why will the devil want to just get up and begin to frustrate the life? Why will a woman who loves God sincerely find her husband just beating her and things going wrong why will a ministry that so calls upon the name of the lord look like the heavens are closed are you following me now let me tell you this you know what satan wanted what to be like god does not necessarily mean to sit on his throne because we still see satan showing us what he wanted in matthew chapter 3 when jesus finished fasting for 40 days what happened he called him and he said Ah, help me Holy Spirit. I'm really rushing ahead of myself. I don't want to just rush too much. I want us to connect so that we can get this thing. Notice, when Jesus was fasting, Satan was waiting patiently. When he finished fasting, Satan came. Question one, turn these stones into bread. Question two, my Bible, your Bible says, Satan took Jesus to a mountain. Where is that location today in the earth? He said he took him from that mountain. You can see the glories of the earth. Where is it? These are spiritual languages. Which mountain do you stand on and you see the glories of the earth? Including the resources. And he said, all this has been given to me. Here's the deal. Watch this. Bow down to me. Is that all? That means Satan does. It's not about Satan wanting prosperity. Are you getting me? It's not about withholding the child. It's not about refusing you the admission. There is something bigger than that. That oppression is a means to an end. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not about stopping the ministry. It's not about a spirit coming to you in dreams and trying to sleep with you. It's bigger than that. It's not about refusing you to build a house or buy a car. Satan will give it to you cheaply. But there is what he's looking for. And he met Jesus to try it one more time. Because the Bible tells us in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So the fullness of all he wanted showed up full of grace and truth. And Satan says, here is the negotiation. I know God watches you all the time. Bow to me. Notice every system of the Antichrist always cries and craves for allegiance. When a 90 feet solid gold was built, is that true? In Babylon, he said when music starts playing, what happened? Everybody pay your allegiance. It's a mockery. There is an expression that that happens. That's why Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he begins to tell us a few things. Wherefore God had anointed him and done this and that. And at the mention of the name, every knee will bow. The concept of bowing is not just putting your head down. It's coming to a state where you acknowledge the government of another above you. Hallelujah. And so that was what Satan wanted. And then... According to all he knew, listen, Satan deceived them. The word, the word Satan, listen, the word Satan means an accuser. It's a generic name. It's not the name of an entity. Are you getting me? Satan is not just the name of a person. It means the accuser. It's a system of the operation of darkness. Accusations, right? 
And then devil means deceiver. They shall cast out devils, not just one. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so, what happened was that this rebellion, as shown to us in the book of Revelation, when this rebellion started, the Bible said there was war in heaven. Satan mobilized, according to the revelation of John, a third of the angels, and they led a rebellion against God. The goal was to use the strength of the mysteries about God that he had known to dethrone God so that he would sit upon that seat of the eternities as king. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then something happened. There was war in heaven. And Michael, the Bible says, the archangel, right, rose up against him and that contention. It says Satan prevailed not and he was casted. Please watch this. When Satan was casted down, they never knew. Now, how do I explain this? For you to carry out a function in heaven, you must change your state according to that function. There is a raiment and a garment and an appearance that you must take when you are going to worship God. When you are about your office, there is a garment. The psalmist saw this. That's why he called praise a garment. Is that true? He said he will give you a garment of praise. It's not just words you chant. It's a garment you wear that helps you to absorb the glory of God as you worship Him. Are you following me now? And so, for them... To be able to carry out this treacherous assignment, they had to do what the Bible called leave their original estate. Have you read it in the Bible? That they that did not keep their original estate, their default state of being, they had to translate themselves. And Satan made them understand that if for any reason anything happens, he has a system that can return them back. And when there was war, watch this. In their bid to translate themselves back at the face of defeat, they saw another dimension of the wisdom of God they never knew. Are you getting me? Mm. The nature of God himself co compels him to evolve in wisdom. He's called the fountain of wisdom. And when that happened, it put these spirits in a state where they will, it's like um. It's like a state of non-equilibrium. You are no longer at rest. Please, are you getting what I'm saying now? Because you only are at rest when you assume the position you were created. So when, when that state is changed or aberrated, there is a constant contention. So as it is now, demons and powers, including Satan, cannot find rest. Can you imagine that? It's a perpetual level of torture. That's the reason why they never stay in one place. It's in your Bible. When Job, when Satan was asked by God, from where are you coming? What did he say? Running to and fro. In, in an attempt. Because the only way is to occupy themselves. There is a default position that has been corrupted. It's the same way when the spirit leaves a man. Jesus told us this. He said he goes around through dry regions looking for shelter. The only way that demon spirits can get a little succor is when they occupy a material vessel. And the best of the kind is a human vessel. Am I boring you? Is God helping us? We are going somewhere with this story because some of you at the end of this meeting you will walk back home and all of a sudden you will say in the name of Jesus, I never knew. Look, let me tell you something. The strength of evil is lies. The strength of evil is deception to cause you to believe a perspective that no longer exists. And on the strength of that thing you can sit down but the Bible says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, something is happening to someone in this place. All of a sudden you will find out that it's not an issue of trying. There is victory that you can stand upon. This is the true revelation of God's grace. You're my treasure. My priority, who 
can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Satan wants that position to be like God. And he wants it by rebellion. And God threw Satan down. And God used man to prove to Satan that he's not insecure about his nature. And he gave man everything Satan wanted. Watch this. The making of man was a slap to Satan. That was what he fought for. Because if, if God remained at that state, it could be suggested that his insecurity about his position would have made him to fight anything. And that's perfect love cast out fear. And he needed to prove it by the creation of man. And he molded Adam from the dust of the earth. Angels were made from light. The material of their creation is light. Like thunder strikes. Right? That's why you see Satan moving in the similitude of that. Jesus said, I beheld Satan. Like what? Hallelujah. And so we see that when man was made, the Bible says, and God, Elohim, breathed into that man everything that consists of him. Now, you need to understand this in the spirit that you have everything a man has does not mean you can function like him. It's very, very different. Are you getting me? I can give you my car, but you may not drive like me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this is the balance. Because many people just say, I am one with Christ, equal in everything. And that exaggeration has led them into madness and they have become casual. They have victims of a lot of things. So, that you have God's nature does not make you equal to Him. It makes you equal with Him. There is a difference. To be equal with a man means you are a partaker of his class of existence. To be equal to a man means you can replace him comfortably. Hallelujah. And so we find out that when he made man, he took man and kept him in the Garden of Eden. Brothers and sisters, the Garden of Eden is still intact. Nothing has happened to it. Archaeologists are looking for it for nothing. The Garden of Eden is not in this realm. If it was in this realm, we would build blocks to close the gate. Look at what was used to close the gate of Eden. A cherubim and a flaming sword. The Garden of Eden is still intact. We see it in Revelations again. Right? So God, the Bible says, made in the east of Eden a garden. And there he planted man. And so on and so forth. And he put two trees there. Now, those trees were not for hunger. Man could not be hungry. Are you getting what I'm saying? The purpose of those eating was it, it sustains what we call Zoe, the eternal life. The eating of the tree of life was meant to sustain the life of God. It was not for nutrition. That's why in Revelation, we still see the trees again. Right? Every tree bearing its fruit every month. 12 months, we see the tree. The tree will give you impartation. There was something that the fruit of the tree would do. Same thing with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Encapsulated in that tree was an ancient history God did not want man to know. But he needed to activate the free will of man. And so he said, make your choice. And Lucifer came. Watch this. Let me begin to reveal to you the blueprint of Satan's strategy. When he came to the garden, who did he meet first? The woman. Because the man was the head of the woman. The goal was to take back the dominion. But he needed to go through the woman. So in like manner, the church is now the wife, the bride of Christ. Christ being the second Adam. And so Satan is still on the same agenda. Are you getting me? But he's going through the eve of this Adam, the church. Using the same tools he used in the Garden of Eden. The tools of deception. The tools of flattery and lust. Are you getting me? Because marriage was so designed that true love is a man being able to die for his wife. Adam was not deceived. Love made him join Eve to fall. That, 
Is that true? That's why Jesus Christ, to prove that he was the second Adam, needed to love us enough to become like us. That's the character of marriage. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Come and give himself. Is God speaking to us? And so you see that this is an old story. When all he needed to do was to get Eve to compromise. Eating the apple did not make her fall. It was the proof she had fallen. Fallen from what? That's what you need to ask. When the Bible says we have all fallen from a standard, it didn't mean we stopped becoming human. There was a configuration of mankind as a tripartite being. Right? That the spirit of man are you following me now? Had dominion over the soul and the body and the devil changed that configuration so that it was now possible that the devil could bypass the authority of the spirit of man and corrupt his soul. Man fell short of that standard. And when man fell short of that standard, certain things started happening because Satan knows that God is prophetic in nature. He began to study his operation. And God looked from the heaven, Genesis 1 verse, uh, uh, I mean Genesis 4 now, 3, 4, began to say, and the Lord, and they had the talking spirit, right? The voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he looked at the spiritual position where man was always, and he did not see man there again. And he said, Adam, where are you? It wasn't like he was looking for man in a garden. It was a spiritual position of headship and dominion. He didn't find it again. He said, where are you? And man said, the woman. In other words, my love for her, according to the design of marriage, has forced me to identify with her. And he looked at the woman and said, what have you done? She said, the serpent. And then all of that began to happen and Satan paid very close attention to every detail that God was saying. Among the many things he said, he communicated a mystery that began the battle. He said, the seed shall bruise your head. Satan understood the gravity of that because until that time, listen, there was no reproduction. Reproduction was a possibility that had never been experienced in any dispensation. Only creation. So Satan did not know that it was possible for a man and a woman to come together and produce another entity. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible says this, and Adam knew his wife. A mystery the devil did not understand. All of a sudden he saw a woman pregnant and she gave birth to a baby. And he thought that Cain was that seed that was prophesied. That's why Satan went after Cain. Are you getting the point? And then the Bible says Abel now came. Right? And when Abel came, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist entered Cain and made him to kill Abel. Are you following the story? The origin of this system we call the Babylonian system. Jezebel, the Antichrist system. That's where it started. From that man called Cain. The Bible says Cain departed from the presence of God. You know what that means? Because the psalmist said, how can I, it says, where can I depart from your presence, right? To, to depart from the presence of God means he willfully chose an allegiance to another system that was not of God. And on the strength of that, the Bible says he began to build a city to name it after his own son, Enoch. Genesis 5. I'm sorry, I have scriptures for all of these things, but I'm just rushing because of time so that we can pray. I want us to pray today. Hallelujah. Watch this. What is the goal of that system? Is to raise up a structure and raise a people and a habitation that does not honor God, does not pledge their allegiance to his government. It, it is the continuation of Satan's manifesto. Are you getting what I'm saying? When Cain died and was judged... Because the judgment that came happened when the spirit of Elijah first manifested in, the, manifested in the Bible. And it manifested in the person of Noah. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's not about a man, Elijah. Every time there was a revival that would bring judgment and bring people back to the ordinances of God, Elijah must precede it. So Noah is told to build an ark made of gopher wood. And it took him 120 years to build that ark. Four times the size of a stadium. And he spent 120 years building that edifice. And the moment he did that, the animals started coming in one by one, by themselves. And there was a flood. Because a flood is symbolic of judgment. We see it in Genesis 1-2. Right? And when that judgment occurred, please listen. When that judgment occurred, the Bible says Noah, the sons and all of that, only eight people were in the earth. Because eight is a number for new beginning. So it was the beginning a counter to what Satan wanted. Immediately that happened. The Bible tells us Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And one of his sons came and saw his nakedness. Look at me. There is more to that story than what you have read. I've said it again and again. Don't parents, don't children take their parents to the hospital and bath them. What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause? Is beyond that. It's a coded language. It will take the spirit to decipher what really happened there. It wasn't just looking at the nakedness of a man. No. The daughters of Lot slept with their father. Is that not true? If you look and judge things just by the eyes, you will be confused. You must learn to rise to a higher plane in the spirit. And then you begin to look at the spirit behind the happening. Is God helping us? We'll soon get to a point where we pray. I'm just leading us because I really want us to understand the program and the agenda of God. It has always been the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist arising to contend against the government of God to still prove that God is not just and he does not deserve to be the Almighty. Not to even talk of a father like our brother sang, having children. That's a concept Satan argues with. And the church is God's envoy to prove that Satan was defeated. Hallelujah. And then we see, watch this, Genesis 9 and 10. The earth begins again. And then in verse 11, we see the spirit of the Antichrist show up again. In a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. Are you getting me? That is the origin of what we call witchcraft today. Bible history makes us know that Nimrod, listen, the spirit of the Antichrist made Nimrod to kill his father, Cush, and married his mother, Samiramai. And she's what is aberrated today as the queen of the heavens. I'm not going into all of those details. The origin of witchcraft. There's no time I would have traced it for you from Nimrod Kush. And then we'll get down to Africa. And you'll see why Africa is a place of witchcraft. It didn't just happen, brothers and sisters. Because Nimrod was a hunter. Hunting what? Animals. When you read Revelations 19, talking about the mystery Babylon. And the Bible tells us this system of Babylon... She, it gives her the character of a woman and he says she's a businesswoman. He said the kings of the earth have benefited from her merchandise and he begins to lead all her goods of transaction and the last are the souls of men. Let's look at it. At least let's open the Bible now. Some of you are already looking at me in a strange way. Revelation 19. Mambrodo Supreti Shila Priata Katabaladaba. Revelations 19. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, oh, Sorry, 18. 18. I'll read from verse 9 to 13 very quickly. Then I'll tie up a few things and we'll pray. Are you there? And the kings of the earth have what? committed fornication and live luxuriously with her. Meaning they bowed down. They did, the kings of the earth finally did what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego didn't do. 
They did what Jesus refused to do. And when they did that, they were prophets. Those who say it does not profit to serve Satan, there are prophets. It's at the expense of your soul. But you can see the prophets. It was through their fraternity with Satan that they became rich. Mysteriously rich. Mysteriously influential. The Bible says, shall bewail her and lament for her, and they shall see the smoke of her burning. Then, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, that great city, you see now, Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come. Tomorrow when I begin to talk to you about the mystery of what Samson, I, I, I mean what um, uh, Samson did, you will find out that Samson did not just carry foxes and tie their tails. There is a very deep prophetic meaning. But if you don't understand what I'm teaching you, you will think he just, how did he carry their tails and put a lamp on it? There is a deep message there. Because Samson was created to, he was the manifestation of the spirit of Elijah upon Samson. He was a judge in Israel to bring men back to the ordinances of God. That was why like Jezebel, Delilah followed him. You see it now again. Hmm. Delilah was not a prostitute. Delilah did not just want to sleep with Samson. If a woman wants to sleep with you, is it not money she will ask? Look at what this woman kept asking. What is the source? Tell me. It was not about all. And, and Samson did two mistakes we must avoid. His hair and his eyes. We'll, we'll deal with that tomorrow. But let's, let's finish up Revelations. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall what? Weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. She has been marketing to people. Bow to me and I will make you rich. I'm not against prosperity. That's not so. Tomorrow we are going to have time to, to minister and all of us. But I'm telling you that there is a system. It's an antichrist government. Are you ready to see her merchandise? If you are a Christian, read with me. Verse 12 and 13. One to go. The merchandise of gold and silver. Precious stones and pearls file linen and so on and so forth let's jump to verse 13 uh-huh uh-huh hold on are you seeing ointment there she sells anointing you can get anointing when you bow to her are you hearing what i'm saying part of her commodities is ointment she can give you anointing let's read on and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and cattle and sheep and horses and chariots and what? And what? Are you seeing there? She can give you the souls of men. It's a system that deals with the souls of men. The way you buy a recharge card. That's why Jesus said, what shall it profit you? He uses a business language. If you gain the whole world, and sell your soul. The question is, who is the other person at the other side of the business? Babylon. That system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In one hour, that system will crumble. But for now, there is that government. Believers, listen to me. There are two kingdoms in this earth. Whether you believe it or not, there is an ancient story. It's the story of allegiance. It's a story of fraternity. It's a story of proving your submission to an authority and a government. It is a story that predates our existence. That is the reason why the system of witchcraft in Africa, the goal of the system of witchcraft in Africa is transgenerational allegiance. As simple as that. To make sure that the people rise and keep paying their allegiance to Satan through different vehicles. So the moment you step and declare that your allegiance is to the King Most High, certain things begin to happen. And that is the purpose of power. Without this understanding, power is useless. It can be abused and it will not be known. Look, 
by the time I finish this, and I believe that by the time Apostle Samson comes to preach and they tie everything up, look, let me tell you the truth. You will walk in this earth realm as if Satan does not exist. It's not about I reject him. No, 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 no. That, that is a carnal way of achieving spiritual things. Because he said, upon this rock, I will build. It was a revelation that for anything to walk, there must be a rock you are standing on. Meaning if I say be healed, what is the rock I'm standing on that authorizes the manifestation? Are you seeing that? It's God's system. For everything you verbalize and speak, there must be insight. One time, the Lord opened my eyes in the spirit and I was in a vision. And I saw an ancient gate. And as I kept looking, it was a door. And then I saw smaller doors attached to it. Like the smaller doors made the big doors. And as I looked at them, I saw scriptures inscribed on them. Scriptures. And they were opening and closing. And then I noticed that certain do small doors will open and light will come out. And the Lord told me, every time you catch the revelation of a scripture, the power to demonstrate his reality comes upon you. You see why I began to say yesterday that we have many insights but the proof that they have not become real is the grace to demonstrate their reality has not been imparted upon us. And this I believe will be what will tie up this meeting as we contend as spiritual men to say Lord grant us access into the light that proves your reality. That's what it means to be an ambassador. A custodian, a protector of an ideology. Hallelujah. Look at me. Through evolution, not scientific evolution, I mean the change, the passage of time and civilization, the system of Satan has assumed different bodies. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And masqueraded itself in secrecy through different governmental operations. And right now, that system has spread itself across the strata of human influence. It's in our education. Right? It's in family life. It's everywhere in the media. So you see that there is a distribution of this system. An antichrist system, that government, mystery Babylon. I preach the message, you can get it, give me this mountain unveiling the mystery of the spirituality of life. That when you stand before any mountain, there are gates that you must pledge where you stand before they open. Listen, you go to school and you graduate and you are happy. After serving, you are running and when you get to that mountain, the gates ask you, thank God for your school, but whose side are you? In life, if you will ever rise, your fraternity cannot be ambiguous. You must state clearly where you stand and to whose flag you pledge your allegiance. Hmm. Notice that many of our mothers and fathers or grandmothers in the village, they gave birth to 15 children, man of God. 15 children and didn't go to the hospital because the ancient had fraternities with gods that govern territories. Commit your allegiance and we will... The, I, I went to a place in Gombe State. When, when I go to cities like that, I, I like going on tours and I saw a mountain. Right? It looks like the cap of a man. And they started telling me the story there. And they told me that the ancient told them that the kings in those days had fraternity with the gods of the rock. And that at war, that mountain will open up and people will run in for safety. The deal is it will eat up the last person to enter and the last person to go out. And there are only about two people alive who experience that. Old people who testify that it is true. Notice, they never went through CS. Whether umbilical cord was, was, was caught with stone or whatever, it did not affect them. Because say, the, Satan's goal is not your money. It's not your car. It's not your church. It's an issue of allegiance. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so for declaring your stand, all of a sudden, you write jam infinite times and nothing is happening. And of course, I know that there are people who, there are principles here that may have been ignored, but there are people who stand and you find out this gate will not open. Satan is bringing you to a point where the God's faithfulness becomes questioned so that he will now offer you the alternative like he did to Jesus. He said, why go through these long routes to receive this kingdom? Just bow and I will give you. Bow and let's end this. Satan is still telling men to bow today. And there are many who have bowed down and they are benefiting from the merchandise. 666 is not just the mark of the beast you get on your hand and your head. 666 is a mystery operation of darkness. Is Satan attempting to mimic the Trinity because 6 is the number of man. The first 6 is the operation of Satan. Are you listening to me? Manifesting as God the Father. The second 6 is the what? I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, the Antichrist manifesting as Jesus. That's why the Antichrist, the person, comes in the similitude of Jesus. No marriage, dies and comes back to life. Is that true? And then the third six are the false prophets taking the place of the Holy Spirit. It's the organogram. That, that 666 is the autobiography of evil. It's a coded language. The meaning of everything that I've said from the beginning of this teaching is this. Look at me. CGC, you are standing right now in the middle of history. Sister, it's not about a man not coming to marry you. It's about an old story. But then, we must find out what system God has put in place for us to rise up beyond the grip of this right and to experience the reality of the kingdom life and to advocate the same this becomes our mandate right now every time i pray and i worship god the heartbeat of god keeps pressing in me every time listen to me africa as a continent Right now is where the attention of hell and heaven is. Every other continent has failed God. We are the last continent left to demonstrate that a people can prove corporately their allegiance. That's why the Bible says, this is the generation of them. Not the person, a generation can prove our allegiance. Listen to me. We are in the middle of history. I'm being prophetic in my teaching now. Europe as a continent have had their opportunity to lift up the banner of Christ and they failed. Great men like Smith Wigglesworth came from those places. But as they began to pass this baton, there was a corruption. America as a nation where the great men Alexander Dewey, the Azusa Street Revival, the men that we covet and talk so much. But the problem is in the middle of that Jezebel came and there was a marriage between the church and Jezebel and they did not know when they shifted Jezebel began to activate an affinity for the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life watch this and the moment that happened the emphasis of God came upon the nation of Africa what I'm telling you is by the revelation of the spirit and the Lord began to reveal to me that in these last days, this has been an agenda of God. There are three nations that will be featured in the program of God. Number one, Nigeria. Number two, Ghana. Number three, South Africa. These three nations are prophetically stationed because the restoring the order of the system of God is the king, priest, and prophet. And that order is being restored. And Africa will be the continent that will restore that. Now watch this. The distribution of the grace and the distribution of the working of God is that the kingly anointing went to South Africa. 
Listen to me. The prophetic anointing went to Ghana and the priestly anointing came to Nigeria. But in Ghana, there was a mixing of the wine with water. Traditional Christianity began to corrupt the prophetic dimension in them. And as I speak to you, both the king, priest, and prophetic mantle has returned to Nigeria. Watch this. But it has been shrouded in a mystery you will never know. The carriers are not yet on air. They do not even know they are the carriers yet. Nigeria is the firstborn of God in Africa. This is a mystery. That's why the Bible begins to speak about Nigeria in Isaiah 18. The country whose rivers divide. Right? And when you understand this, you will know why there is a replay. I told you that the system of Babylon has never changed. It has evolved through civilization. Boko Haram is beyond politics. The sub-Saharan Africa and the terrorists. No! It's, 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 it's a contention of light and darkness. And every time that state of apostasy begins to come to a nation, Elijah will arise again. Now, not as an individual, Elijah arises and, as an apostolic and a prophetic system with two mandates. The first is to restore the order of the patterns of spiritual things. When Elijah showed up, his first context was to destroy the prophets of Baal, to bring an end to apostasy. And this is what God is doing right now. A correction of the errors of the fathers. Are you getting my point? And this move of the spirit is adumbrated in the person of Eli and Samuel. Eli represents the generation of our fathers. Samuel represents the new generation that is arising. Watch this. Eli was a great man. But at a point in time, he began to allow certain things to happen. He himself may not have seen, but he, he used his influence to create a room for his sons to begin to comp compromise. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the eyes of Eli began to dim. I say this, not, I have deep honor for our fathers. But I tell you, there is a dimming happening in the spirit. This is not a mockery. But the Bible tells us that Samuel, who is a type of this apostolic and prophetic generation, the first thing he did that was right is to lie down close to the ark. That was the basis of his hearing the voice of God. Mm. So Eli was there and what happened? A voice began to call. Samuel! Watch this. That's the voice of the Spirit calling that generation. It's not a person. It's calling that apostolic and, and prophetic generation. Samuel! And Samuel got up and went to Eli. And notice, and I'm going to put the balance now. God was asking Samuel to wake up. Eli to wake up. But, I mean, um, Samuel to wake up, but Eli told him to do what? He said, go back to sleep. Have you seen that? The voice of the Spirit is calling. Where are the young men and women who, although young, are going to carry ancient mantles? And Eli is saying, go back to sleep. But Samuel went back in honor to the fathers, but he still had the voice again. Samuel, I call upon you. Wake up. We are too young to question some of the things our fathers are doing. They have an advantage of experience and we honor it. But in the midst of our frailty, we are hearing a voice that some of them may not be hearing. And that voice is saying, Samuel, get up. And they are saying, it's okay, sleep back. Please let me have the simba. The Spirit of God is already charging my spirit. This is a prophetic message. There is a, a, there is a waking up. Mm. Go and do ministry. Be on air. That's the fastest way to happen. But a voice is saying not so. 
the pattern I'm bringing is a strange one. Thank God for the power of mentorship. But this is not a cyclical movement of the spirit. There is an ancient pattern. It has not been taught. It has never been seen. This is a dimension. It's coming from an angle that has not been taught. Men and women. Samuel. But Eli says, go back to sleep. What's this? And the spirit of the Lord began to reveal to me the structure on how the revival will happen. And it was adumbrated in the first miracle of Jesus, the wedding of Cana. The Bible says there was a feast. Is that true? And there was a feast. And all the men of God were in front. And Jesus was somewhere lost in the congregation. They did not appreciate the object. Jesus has been lost in the convention. Jesus has been lost in the conference. I'm not criticizing the men of God. They have tried. Don't forget, it was still Eli that told Samuel is the voice of God. We still need their ministry. We cannot be so pompous as to forget. The advantage of experience will help us navigate through certain paths. However, we must be able to be cautious as we tread. Because for some of them, they have mixed wine with oil. And they will compel us to bend to their patterns. It was an old prophet that caused the death of a young one in the Bible. And the Bible tells us, watch this. The feast was going on. Television program was going on. Prosperity was going on. And then there is a mystery that happened. He said, and the wine finished. But the feast was still on. And the wine finished. And branches were still being built. And the wine finished. And Jesus was there. Watch this. And certain things began to happen in that feast. Certain strange men sat down by the insight of the spirit like the wise men and began to say, this this is Jesus sitting down. And the rulers were in front, making a name and enjoying the feast. And those people went to Jesus and said, although you are hidden, we are not confused about who you are. You can do something. You can change the tide. And Jesus said, leave me alone. You've been doing your ministry. Keep doing it. You've been doing a lot of things. And Mary, a type of the Holy Spirit in that context, came and said, listen, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And Jesus said, all right, if you want the revival, this is how it will happen. Number one, fill six pots with water. It will not be an issue of anointing. It will first start by a correction. A revelation of the washing of the water by the word. I know it will all end up in anointing. But it will first start as water. He said, fix it. Fill six pots. And when they did that, he said, fetch it and take to the rulers. And the Bible says, as they went in obedience. It will, that means it will be a process. You won't get anointed overnight. Fast for 40 days, there are some realms that will never come by impartation. There is a badge that will be given to you when you pass through it. Are you getting what I'm saying? They will do unusual things. But they will not walk in rebellion. And as they went to the rulers, the Bible says the water started changing to wine. And when the rulers thought the feast was over, Little did they know it was about to start. I apologize to you, but I've had men of God speak as if they are the ultimate custodians of the mysteries of God. As if there is nothing else. They have stretched the boundaries of all that they can be in Christ. But was that not the mistake of Satan? He said, when you have built houses, when you have done this, do not say my power and the might of my hand. That's what the Bible calls pride of life. I explained it to you. Pride of life only happens when you accomplish something. And we must take care. So that the the balance here is, as we talk about them, we must be careful. Because many of them threaded paths that if we were to tread, we would have died since. On account of that, God is still keeping some of them in spite of their error. Their sacrifice is too much for them to die. God's integrity is upon their life and they will see the coming revival before they leave. 
That's why in the, some of them have entered into blatant apostasy. But you talk about them, God will punish you as if he did not see what they are doing. Because their sacrifice has risen as a memorial. So this is the balance. We have zealous young people teaching rebellion and advocates rebellion to the fathers because of what they claim they have gotten. Right? And then we have fathers who are doing so. There is a balance. That's part of the ministry of the spirit of Elijah. Let me tell you something. This is what God is doing now. A correction. Many of the messages you have jumped about on TV in the next five years, you will not hear it again. I guarantee you. Because there is a new wine. Ah, there is a new wine. Servants carrying this wine. And when the rulers took it, they said, what? The best of wine is given from the beginning. But where did you keep this wine? The Bible said the rulers did not know where this wine came from. Only the servants. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Nigeria will present to the world before Christ comes a true portrait of apostolic and prophetic Christianity. God is counting on our nation. This is what has been seen by terrorist groups. And they have begun to advocate and do a lot of things. Watch this. When the Spirit of God came to the continent of Africa and Nigeria, He met one big resistance. The name of that resistance is the Spirit of Religion. Because of denominationalism, the weaving of the authentic Christianity with culture, right? So it created certain things that have interrupted the Spirit. So that in a particular denomination, for instance, the Spirit of God will not be able to communicate. And then God in his wisdom, divided Nigeria into two, spiritually. The first phase is a training camp. The second phase is a mission field. The training camps, like the Taliban, are the different structures that God has mysteriously orchestrated where this army will begin to, to, to be built. And God started it this way. He started using campuses university campuses, higher institution campuses, because at home some of you if you, are in, if you are at home by six you must be at home because your parents don't want you to do something wrong. They are not wrong but God wants to do more so he gives you admission. Even if you got 130, he still sent you there. Right? And while you are studying chemistry the spirit of God is doing something to you. The recruit has begun to take place. An ideology you would have fought. Now an opportunity is given to you to begin to probe it. And God started using interdenominational ministries. Are you seeing that? To close out that resistance that comes with what we know to be denominationalism. And I tell you, it's a project that is progressing. As I speak to you, this meeting is part of that contribution to that agenda. This is why some people cannot die. It's not just because they are claiming life. They have structured themselves at the forefront of the prophetic agenda of God. God would rather a nation die than for them to die. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's what will make you pass through fire. And when all is said and done, you will come out as if nothing happened. There is an immunity that your assignment has created around your life. Listen, that process does something to you. It brings you to a point where you lose touch of an agenda of yourself. Hallelujah. The training is so thorough. When you come out, anybody that went through that training knows when you are finished. There is no guessing. You don't jump classes. Every class, if you jump it, even if it's after 20 years, you must go back and wear that primary school short nika and pass through that class. Hallelujah. It's not just an issue of formula. It's a testament. A testament of your allegiance. That means whatever contribution you make to bring this global agenda of God to pass at this point, let me tell you, you are at the heart of what God is doing. Whether it's to sow into it financially or create a structure 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if it is to polish the shoe of the man of God who will advocate that. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It said they shall prosper who love you. For showing that they love your agenda alone, there is a blessing for them. This is why you can meet a man of God like Apostle Samson and just greet him and say, sir, God bless you, I honor you. A challenge of 10 years disappears and he's not even aware. It's not just the issue of anointing. God is so passionate to see this agenda come that no matter how small your contribution is, it's enough for battles to be fought that you did not pray for. It is based on this that you can say, I shall not die. You, you see the problem with the body of Christ? Our carnality, we just found something and out of fear. I shall not die. I shall not die. And these devils are saying, you are joking. There is an immunity that a position. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. See, we need to go back to understand the word of God. There are too many things we are claiming without understanding the ordinances that activate their reality. And so we tread paths that we should not tread out of ignorance. And we become victims of casualties. But it is they that know their God. The word know is the word a man knowing his wife. And there are two dimensions to that knowledge. An encounter with him and an understanding of his structure and his principles. He said there are two rewards. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. We are going to pray. There may not be time for impartations and all of this. Our time is gone. But I just want us to pray tonight. Hallelujah. And then tomorrow, we'll have time to minister to us. I know many of us have come to catch anointings and graces. Some of you, God disappointed you and is blessing you. Because your goal is to come and catch something and run and intimidate your small fellowship. And God says, sit down. Sit down. Let there be a sharpening in your spirit. Because if you take the anointing, the anointing amplifies everything in you. So you find out that the anointing creates more room and you would think God is leading you to more loss. Uh -uh. God says I must prune you. This is the structure of the army. You must be pruned. Thank God for the name they have called you. That's why I love meetings like this. You see, let me tell you, as I speak like this, I not only speak to you, I speak to myself. Where a true apostolic spirit is a spirit that cries with reckless abandon. You don't come and try to talk to the people. You come open before God and say, Lord, let your glory come. And together as an apostolic body, we cry and we contend for more. Because there's a system of growth in the spirit. He that bears fruit, my father will still prune as a sign that you are bearing fruit. There's an army... Rising up, please rise up on your feet. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up, and they have just one mission to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army. There's an army. They will break every chain. So what you will see unfold in the body of Christ is that there is an impartation of the spirit of Elijah. Fierce men. Men that you cannot trace them to anything. All of a sudden they will arise. Brothers and sisters, the hallmark of the spirit of Elijah is the sword that you hold in your hand. That sword is a symbol of judgment. Not judgment to the people of God. Judgment in the house of God is pruning, not condemnation. A cutting away of the excesses. Pruning of ideologies that have been fabricated at the heart of the Christianity of Nigeria. There will be an editing. It's by the spirit of Elijah. Returning men to the ordinances of the ancient. Men who will be passionate about God. They are moved just by one desire. They have no ambition of their own. If it means ministry fail for the agenda of God to succeed, they are ready to hide their individualism that the corporate growth of the body will be experienced. To break every chain. 
to break every chain to break every chain listen to me not everybody will be part of this army i wish it were so if i tell you everybody will be part of this army i lie to you we are all of the household of faith but let me tell you something you will have to attract the attention, the attention of God by your uncompromising allegiance. It's not a gift. It's a reward for a definite pursuit. This is what the prophet began to speak. There are three dimensions of rest as taught in the Bible. The first dimension of rest is a gift by the grace and the mercy of God. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy and are heavy laden. I will give you. The second dimension of rest was spoken in Hebrews 4. Paul begins to say, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there is a rest. He said, he that has entered that Sabbath, there is a proof. He has passed through the training and it a badge, a symbol of authority has been given. It's on the strength of that you can tell one, go, and he will go. And you will tell another, come, and he will come. This generation will be a fierce generation. They will move in levels of the anointing that has not been seen. See, let me tell you, this prosperity thing you hear, we have not seen one-tenth of the kind of prosperity that will fund this agenda. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Men will walk like gods upon the earth. They saw Paul and Barnabas and they called them Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. Men will communicate with the voice of angels. They will speak across territories. Not just, no, Joshua spoke to the sun. They will alter the, color, the constellations to ensure that the purposes of God come to pass. God is training them. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Our manifestation is still shrouded in a mystery. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. We are still in the cave of Adulam. David was relocated to the cave of Adulam and that was his place of training. That was his place of building. And certain men came to David in the cave of Adulam. Those who were in debt. Those who were weak. They were feeble. And by an act of the spirit, David made mighty men out of them. One of them fought, killed 800 people, and his sword will not fall from his hand. These are men who will gain mastery. The Bible says, he that desires mastery must be temperate in all things. That's why God is cutting excesses. It may not be for everybody, but God will ban you from Twitter. It's not an instruction for everybody. You can't create a doctrine out of it. But because of your unique dealing and the position you play, it will require of you to pay that price. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Let me tell you, there are dimensions in the spirit that are rewards. If everything is a gift, what then is the reward for obedience? Bible says, he that endures, he will be given a crown and a white stone. All men are not equal. We are equal in grace. The grace of God has appeared unto all men. But our level of obedience and allegiance has separated us into kedas. He said, I am a man under authority. And by reason of the authority, I can tell one go and tell another come. Please, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two and we are going to pray. Just three prayer points. Find somebody's hand and please pray. This is an apostolic and a prophetic meeting. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, I am available. I am available. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, find me. That is absolute. God is doing something new in this life. God is working something mighty in our days. God is shifting mysteriously in this life. He won't stop to talk, just won't stop till we act. God. In our day, God is working something powerful. New man turns up to will him, he won't stop. Hallelujah! 
prayer point number two. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says let us lay aside every weight. A weight is not a sin. A weight is anything that has the ability to impede your movement. Seeing then that the ancient have joined the cloud of witnesses. The Bible says, let us lay aside all the encumbrances of bitterness, the encumbrances of immorality, the encumbrances that can frustrate the speed. There is an urgency to this agenda. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, take everything. I surrender everything. Take the anointing. Take the grace. Pray. Hallelujah. Jesus taught us and he said, when you pray, part of the component of the prayer of a mature believer is that you say, thy kingdom come. I live only to see the influence of your government sweep across the strata of mankind. I only live to see a generation that will lift their voice in worship. And I want you to know that Nigeria is not a forgotten generation. Out of the ashes, out of the deaths, let me tell you something. There is a lot that is going to happen to us. God is counting on us. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah, darkness. Listen. There are men who will carry entrepreneurial anointings, not as business to make money. They are apostles on assignment, on common insight granted unto them. To fulfill Zechariah 1 17a. Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord, my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad, and I shall yet comfort Zion. Verse 18 says, Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, the city of praise, against Jerusalem and Israel. He said, But I have sent carpenters. Four carpenters. Man take a lake tire. An apostolic and a prophetic system that will stamp the gates of hell. Man break it We will open up the two leaf gates over nations. We will command the Bible says, and the stars fought for Deborah. He will give us spiritual intelligence and we will understand the mysteries of the constellations, the mystery of the equilibrium of the earth, access to the ancient secrets that made others powerful victory. We will command territory. Let home darkness to light. Hallelujah. I have seen this in the visions of the Lord. Many times. Many times. The angel of the Lord has shown me. I have seen this many times. There is a move of the spirit. That is coming. Right from Nigeria. The firstborn of God. What Israel is to the world, Nigeria is to Africa. Nigeria is a holy land. There is a mystery that surrounds Nigeria. That is why it cannot be divided. There's no time I would have told you why the elections are the way they are. There is something that must happen in Nigeria. If it happens this year, a door has been closed over darkness till Jesus comes. It's not about PDP or APC. I don't like any of them. But there is an agenda bigger than a party. You must interpret things from the spirit. Listen. Jezebel is seeking marriage with the government. It's an antichrist system. I told you. Jezebel was with Ahab. Jezebel was with Herod. Are you following me? Watch this. In the Bible, have you found out that when Peter, James, and John were there, there were certain mysteries they saw that the other apostles did not see. The spirit of the Antichrist saw that. So James was the first to be beheaded. It was strategic. The moment Herod killed James, he took Peter. 
that, that trinity, the threefold cord that cannot be broken, custodians of the seat of the apostolic and the prophetic. And while they took them, men began to pray. They could not access that place, but they began to pray. And when they began to pray, certain things began to happen. And then they caught John. Because the Bible says, in the end of all things, faith, hope, and, and what? Love will remain. James was a type of hope. Peter was a type of faith. John was beloved, the last man who could not be killed by death. Because love cast out fear. And love triumphs over death. That's why he died a natural death. We are going to pray. Listen. The Bible begins to tell us the prophet saying. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon the holy mountain. And he, begins to, he, he began to describe the dexterity of this army. Listen. We are not men who will just die for Christ for nothing. The sword will do nothing to us. There is, there is an intelligence that we have touched in the spirit that makes us human beings plus something else. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. We are not a fearful generation. And we are not just going to say, ah, by faith for nothing. There is something we know like you know. We will uncover the mysteries of cancer and HIV. They are not diseases. Ebola came to Nigeria and met a church that is alive. We drove it by prophecy. It was not just medical people. Ebola was a spirit invoked from the sea. Hallelujah. What you call cancer is the union between strange spirits and human beings. It has been from the days of Noah. And the Bible says before Christ returns, it will be like the days of Noah. Meaning strange beings will start visiting the earth realm to have intercourse with women and create what looks like a pregnancy to stop the real from happening. But there are ambassadors that will rise. Men fierce from their origin. Custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. And we will tell one, go and he will go. We will tell one, come and he will come. The church will no longer be a place for displaying healing and deliverance because the least will be like Jacob. Are you ready to pray? Listen. You can choose to take God seriously and join what He's doing. See, God is not only going to take things from the wicked and give us. There are righteous men He will take from and give others. Matthew 25, the parable of the talent. What did He do with the one who had one? Did He take it? It's happening. So you will find men who you will see upon their life, Ichabod. They are moving, but truly the glory has departed. Saul was still on the throne when it left him. We are going to pray. Can we intercede in one minute for the agenda and the purposes of God to be birthed? Hold on. The way people pray is really giving me concern. I want us to pray. Pray from the depth of love. Not just by shouting, but it must be heartfelt. This is, this is God's agenda. I want you to know that if you found yourself here, there is a place for you. Hallelujah. There is a place for you. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, your kingdom come. Rakata balada bagada bagada balada dabash Sopra la Rapata pata rabada balada ras Toko topa lada bagada Hallelujah hallelujah There is a lady the power of God has just come on bring that lady out the Lord is speaking to me about her just 2 minutes I'm out we we'll minister tomorrow who is Emmanuel Emmanuel please bring the person out Emmanuel you are wearing a t-shirt with a short hand who is that come God is going to use you mightily. I see the angel of the Lord opening your eyes. Lift your hands. For there is wine that is poured on your head. This is what I see coming upon you. Drink of that wine of the Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring this lady. This is witchcraft. What the Lord will do in this place tomorrow. Hallelujah. My sister, look at me. 
Because I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing tremendous witchcraft in her family. Where are you from? Eh? Why am I seeing a horn? This is what I'm seeing, like the horn of a unicorn. No, no, you don't. That's your safe time. My dear, the Lord is going to set you free. You cannot be in a... Many of you will go tonight and we have not ministered, but you will begin to have strange encounters. You will begin to see the unfolding. All of a sudden, the spirit of fear will leave. You see that? Not just by talk, talk. And... No, 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 no. An experience, the entrance of light that will expel darkness. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. Let her go right now in the name of Jesus. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit. My brother, you will have an encounter. I see you having a dream this night. The Lord is going to give you that dream. You and you are three. Where are the other two? I see three people standing in this meeting. Like friends or something. Where are you? Come. Please, let's save time. I'm sorry for taking all the time. Because I see God doing great and mighty things in your lives. You came here with a sincere hunger for God. You will touch a dimension of grace that will set you on fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's save time. I know that. You see, the thing about prophecy is... My sister, wait. Let her not go. I'm seeing the spirit of death on this lady. Do you have a sister? An elder sister? Where is she? What is she doing? We have to pray for you because there is nothing really working in your family. Number one. And number two, I'm seeing the spirit of death. And this is a bike accident. This is what the Lord is showing me. Huh? A bike accident at a junction. I'm not a prophet of doom. Are you getting what I'm saying? If the Lord reveals this, is because He's going to set you free. There are many people I see here under the influence of strong... My sister, come. That dark lady looking at me. Holy Spirit, help me. Because what you are praying, I'm hearing it in the Spirit, and the angel of the Lord is telling me, attend to this lady. You are saying, oh Lord, let this man of God talk to me and talk about my situation. And I will restore the Spirit of God, says I should tell you, the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar has stolen. I don't know what it is that has happened in your life, but the Lord is bringing restoration. Number two, the Lord is saying, I should tell you, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, the watchman watches but in vain. It's vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he gives unto his beloved sleep. Change her situation, O God, the mighty one. In the name of Jesus, I change that situation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause death from your life. It will never come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your blessing rest upon your people in the name of Jesus Grant us grace to absorb these truths. May they change our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, tomorrow I want you to come prepared as much as possible. Don't just have yourself distracted. Just come focus. You can invite your friends and I'll do little of teaching just to cap up. There is a lot. The man of God, I'm sure, is armed and dangerous to tear this place into pieces. So tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'll be ministering. Please don't be disappointed. I know that there are sick people who have come and different people coming to receive impartations. Please come again. What you are receiving will sustain whatever you receive. Let it be a genuine encounter. Talk to the Lord tonight from the depths of your heart because His presence is in this place. Thank you, Father. Because tonight... Jesus will be exalted. For the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The worlds and they that dwell therein has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend to the seat of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully shall receive.
receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek thy face, O Jacob. And so lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted, O ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? It's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is his name. Father, we truly, truly release ourselves tonight. We pray that you give us an experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I honor every servant of God in this place. So Moses, it's great to see you, sir. God bless you. I honor every campus fellowship and everyone who is doing great things for the king. May the Lord bless you. Steve Strings, thank you so much. God bless you. He's not around. Ah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I trust that God will help us to understand certain principles tonight and we pray. By God's grace, we won't stay long. Just share a few thoughts. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Lord, you reign forever. Lord, you reign Exhort us briefly on how to take territories. I'm talking about territorial dominion. Hallelujah. God's principle for taking over any territory. I'll try to be as simple as possible because I really want us to understand and pray. Praise the Lord. Joshua 1 verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Verse 3. Can we read it together? One, two, read Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto you. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your border. Verse 5, let's read together, one to read. Yet shall any man be able to stand before thee, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor for Hallelujah. 
Now, I want to speak briefly on territories. I want us to, if you're writing, please write. I'd like us to understand a few things about territories. Hallelujah. I'm talking about dominion over territories. Number one, it's important for all of us to know that a territory consists of certain things. There are certain things that make up a territory. Hallelujah. Number one, land. You must have a geographical space. Land. Number two, you must have people around that territory. Number three, there are natural resources around that territory. Hallelujah. Four, there is always a government that coordinates the affairs of that territory. Hallelujah. Whether it is a physical government, whether it is a spiritual government, and please follow me because it's important for us to understand this. If we can get this, then we will be able to follow. Hallelujah. And so you have land, you have people, you have resources, and you have government. You also have influences over that territory. Influences over that territory both spiritual and physical. And this is what makes up a territory. So when we are talking about taking dominion, influencing and exercising the rule, the reign, the sovereignty of the king over a territory, we must first understand what we are talking about. Hallelujah. Because you know, a lot of people come for meetings like this and we don't even know what is being taught. Hallelujah. We just come and rejoice and live happy with one or two prophecies. It's important that we understand what God is saying, what God is doing, and how to align. Hallelujah. Because I want us to have victories in our lives and for the students. Um, the campus is yours for the taking. Hallelujah. It has never been. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend. He said, for as long as I am in the world, I am the light. There is no contention. For as long as I am in a territory, I am the light. Great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa demonstrated territorial influences. Hallelujah. They were agents. They were doorways through which the sovereignty of God was enforced within a jurisdiction. And that's why when he sent the apostles... Oh, he, he was about to give them the mandate in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Why? That you be witnesses unto me. First, in a territory called Jerusalem. Then a larger territory called Judea. And then Samaria. He would have just said the end of the world. But he wanted to, us to know that dominion is territorial. So he took out time to meticulously explain the progression in the territories. First, Jerusalem, and then Judea, and then Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Hallelujah. And so it's important for you to know that every territory has a culture. That's the next point I want you to note. Every territory has a culture. The culture attempts to define the way of life of the people. Their mindset, their ideologies, their modus operandi, their principle of operation. Every territory, when you go to the east, there is a way they behave as a result of their territory. Hallelujah. There is a way they behave, there is a way they eat, there is a way they talk, there is a way they greet. Hallelujah. When you travel down the north, there is a way they behave. The influence of the territory over the people. So a territory affects the culture of people. Their way of life. Their understanding. Their interpretation of reality. Hallelujah. Say after me, culture. The word culture is very important because every culture attempts to open us up to the value system of that territory. Hallelujah. A sister must not tell you she's a Yoruba girl. There is a way she behaves that will reveal to you the territory that she's coming from. Is that correct? And so if the Bible 
calls us citizens of a kingdom, then it means that we have a culture, we have a territory, a jurisdiction. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so you need to realize these are foundational principles of dominion. That you must understand that authority in the realm of the spirit and in the earth realm is territorial. The fight of the kings all through Genesis right until the New Testament has been fight for territory. Is that correct? Fight for territory. More land. More the more land, land mass, territorial influence a king had, it defined his greatness in ancient times. So they consistently were in a journey to dislodge other people and gain ground. And this is an adumbration, a prototype of what the doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Culture. The way of life of the people. And another important truth I want you to get is that the culture that is in a place is also a reflection of the influences that are at work in that territory. Right. This is very important. The influences in a place control and define the behavioral patterns of the people. This is the reason why many geographical locations around Africa are associated with certain things. Are you listening to me? There are certain tribes that people say, ah, these people in this geographical location, men are irresponsible. In this geographical location, um, you know, there are certain traits that are common to people, drunkenness and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. These are as a result of territorial influences. You need to just step into a territory and look at the way of life of the people. And then you can know the kinds of forces. If you step into a place where Jesus is Lord, you just need to look at the people and it will tell you what influence or what spirit is behind the culture of the people. Are you understanding tonight? So these are basic points that I want us to get even as we approach the subject of dominion and take over. So when you are about to enter a city, you not only study the landmass and the people, of all of these factors that I have given you, the most important are the spiritual influences that coordinate the activities of territory. And the structure of the kingdom from which Satan mimic to design his organogram is such that God appoints um, territorial influences. And that's why when he founded a garden, the Bible says he planted a man. Hallelujah. And he filled that man with his spirit so that the spirit of God becomes the influence that coordinates the activities of that territory called earth. And by reproduction, other sons will be born out of that mindset and will be under the governing influence of that spirit. So in every given territory, there is a spirit that is at work. That's why when you get born again, you only transfer allegiance to spirits. From one spirit to the other. At every given time, there is nothing called neutral. At every given time, every man is under the influence of a spirit. That's why the Bible says, as many as are, the word led there is, as many who will permit themselves to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says the sons of disobedience. It says the spirit, the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that is at work. That means when you see sons of disobedience, there is a spirit that is at work. Are you following me tonight? Hallelujah. So when we understand this, it becomes easy to dislodge territories and enforce the value system of the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's not just about confession. I take it, I take it. Uh -uh. Otherwise, many people would have taken certain territories in their lives. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. And so they walk in darkness and the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Listen, it takes understanding of the way the realm of the spirit was designed to operate, to rule and to reign in life. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, believers 
do not have this understanding of how God's system was designed to function. That's why the Bible says, I see a mystery. It says, servants are riding on horses while princes walk afoot. But I pray that the Lord will give us understanding tonight in the name of Jesus. Now, in ancient times, some of you have watched um, all kinds of Scottish films or read the Old Testament. You understood that every time they wanted to take over a territory, please follow up carefully. The first thing they do, listen, is to send spies to go and survey the territory. Are you following me now? Now, these spies come into a territory and they attempt to study the way of life of the people. They disguise themselves and they study. They attempt to understand the weak points, the blessings that are within a territory. And then afterwards, they take word. And what happens? The moment they take back the report, the mighty men begin to prepare because it's time to take over the territory. Are you listening to me? And then a strategy is usually given unto them based on their findings of the territory they want to conquer. There are three things that must be done to conquer any territory as revealed from Scripture. Number one is that the mighty men in that must be conquered. If the mighty men are not conquered, then that cannot be taken. Number two, the climax of a defense of any territory is the capture of their king. Hallelujah. When you capture the king in any territory, this is why Goliath, the Bible tells us that a man, Goliath of God, having six fingers and six toes. These were some of the descendants that came as a result of the aberrated intercourse between the fallen angels and the daughters of men. They began to give birth to people who who assumed a structure that was not God's original configuration. Six fingers, six toes. A man who was a giant. Hallelujah. And he seemed to be the strength of the Philistine army. And they came before the nation of Israel. And he began to roar. It was a hunger to take over a territory. Are you following me now? And all the mighty men stood still. They could not do anything because the great man Goliath was roaring. And now you notice what happened. There was an agreement. Every time you defeat the king in any land, the remaining citizens become your slaves. These are mysteries in the spirit. Please listen carefully. Every time you capture the king of any land, all the citizens become subject to you. And so you will understand Psalm 66 verse 3, which says, How awesome are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Through the greatness of thy power. So you can step into a territory with an understanding and you can live and reign as that does not exist. Hallelujah. Are you learning something tonight? And so you capture the mighty man. You defeat the king. And then what happens? You send governors to take over that new territory and begin to teach the people a new culture. You dislodge the mighty men who protect the interests of that territory. And then you capture the king. And when you capture the king, you send representatives from the motherland who already understand the value system you are trying to enforce. And then they compel everyone to begin to follow a new value system. These are spiritual principles. Hallelujah. And so let's note the following points. Number one, the dormant behavioral patterns in a territory is a reflection of the kinds of spiritual forces. The dominant behavioral pattern in a territory. So, you look at the north, for instance, and you look at certain behavioral patterns, and it helps you to understand the kinds of influences. And now, a lot of believers do not understand these things, and that's why we fall victims. Do you know that in a territory, even the citizens in that territory are subject to the power of whatever influence is behind them. 
Are you listening to me? Paul was giving us this instance when he begins to talk to us in chapter 7 of Romans. He said that I want to serve God, but I see another law walking in my body. There is another influence. So that with my spirit, I'm serving the Lord, but with another, with my body, my members are complying to another law. And Paul began to communicate his frustration. He said, so that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And then, chapter 8, begins by giving us an unveiling of the spirits that are contending in the life of Paul. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Listen, who walk after, who walk not after the flesh, but afterwards, for the law of the spirit. So there is a spirit called the spirit of life in Christ. Has set me free, dislodged me from the influence of another spirit called the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. So every time, there is no empty territory without territorial influence. Man is designed to receive help from a higher realm than himself. That's why there's nothing called an atheist. That is just a psychological jargon. Every man subjects to a spirit of some kind. Knowingly or unknowingly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the dominant behavioral patterns in a territory is a reflection of the kind of spiritual forces. Number two, this is very important when you are talking about territorial dominion. Please listen. Listen. Territorial spirits have legal access to operate across the territory that they walk in. Listen. The realm of the spirit is such that every transaction that is carried out there is on legal terms. You don't, you don't cheat and navigate ways and follow shortcuts as we have in this physical realm. Are you listening to me? When you find certain spirits prevalent in an atmosphere, there is a legal ground that has been given to them. This is why the prophet speaking says, shall the prey be taken from the captive? He said, even the lawful captive. That means there are some captives that are legally, they are in captivity legally. And please hear me, it is so important for believers to get this. Now I know there's an exaggeration when it comes to the issue of demons and deliverance and so on and so forth. But let me tell you something. The Bible says not to be unaware of the devil's devices. There are many ignorant believers who fall into things they do not know and they do not understand. But the Bible says there were certain people called the men of Issachar. They had an understanding. They knew how to interpret spiritual things. And so they knew how to align themselves and to posture. The Bible says the moment they gave birth to Jesus Christ, there was a star. Other people said, wow, why is the earth bright today? But certain people called wise men. There was certain spiritual intelligence they had. They knew that this star would not just appear for nothing. And they began to follow this star. Other people did not understand. But Herod, who had the influence of the same spirit that had followed all the kings in the past, the same spirit in Ahab. The same spirit. He knew it and by spiritual intuition, he said, call my magician. Something is happening in the earth realm. There were motions and shakings in the earth, but people did not know. It's amazing how things can be happening in the heavens. And many believers are just walking ignorant. And what we receive is the consequence, whether good or bad, of whatever happens. But they that are kings will be the one who will regulate times and seasons in the earth realm. The Bible says, God made certain lights to govern times and seasons in the earth realm. You see, so, when you understand this, you will be in total command of your territory. And every time you know this, there is a light in the realm of the spirit. And when forces of darkness see you, they know that you are not ignorant of these laws and the operation of spiritual things. Let me show you a few examples. The Bible talks about Jesus going to a city called Gadara. Have you read that in your Bible? And the Bible says, while they were going in the boat, suddenly there began to be a boisterous wind. Question, was this the first time they were... They were um, doing what now? Moving in the boat and sailing. 
the Bible, did you know that they were going to a new territory? Because the character of Jesus' ministry is that he moved from territory to territory. He said we must go to other lands also. And while they were coming, listen, the forces across that territory began to react. And that was what caused the Bosphorus wind. The Bible tells us that there was a madman who had spirit in him. And the Bible tells us that he used to live in caves. But the moment Jesus crossed over, the madman was already waiting with all the spirits. Who told the madman Jesus was coming to Gadara? Are you listening to me? Suddenly Jesus came and they began to negotiate. They said, ah, you are the son of God. We know this. And Jesus said, how many are you? They said, legion. Those influences brought that madman out to stand and say, Jesus, what have you come to do? To the extent, listen to me, that when Jesus was about to cast them out, what was their plea? They didn't say, don't cast us out. They said, don't take us away from this territory. Let's find peace. We want to remain in this territory. Hallelujah. Are you seeing the reason why many believers, although they are born again, although they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they live as if Jesus lies to us in the Bible. Because they do not understand spiritual things. Territorial dominion. I'm not just talking about a car for myself, a house for myself, a wife for myself. I'm talking of men who stand to legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven. You have spiritual understanding to enforce the value systems of the king across a territory. Elijah understood this and a single man stood and said, Over this territory of my jurisdiction there shall be no rain for a period of three and a half years. He didn't say it in a radio station. He just said it. It was the whiplash of drought that started making people to ask questions. Who is responsible for this? And they said, Elijah. And they said, who is Elijah for God's sake? And Jezebel, who was the wife of Ahab, who had the same spirit, they knew who was responsible and they began to hunt for the prophet. They went directly to the person responsible. It was a clash of authority in the spirit. When Moses, listen, in the, nation of Egypt, in the nation of Egypt, there were several gods, spirits, gods of fertility, gods of many things. That's why when God was calling Moses out, he said that he would go to Pharaoh. And Moses said, who shall I tell them and send me? Because there were many gods. If I tell Pharaoh, God has sent me, Pharaoh will say, which one? Which of them? Because there are many spirits. You see why Egypt was such, was the powerful world empire. Because there was an enormous influence of several spirits. They had free access to that place. That was the reason why even when Joseph died, he said, when you are leaving this land, carry my bones out of this place. Are you listening to me? Did you know why Jesus Christ, do you know why Jesus was on earth? His authority was not in the old earth. That's why when he was sending the disciples, he said, do not go anywhere outside the Lordship of Israel. You will be surprised. His authority was within that jurisdiction until he died and rose again and he was called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He said, now all authority, the remaining parts, go in that authority. This is what Jesus told us all authority. In other words, that's why, see, this is, this is the contention that was happening prophetically in Psalm 24. There was a contention for land. Every king was claiming territory and there was a verdict, the earth is the Lord's. In other words, nobody is a real landlord in this earth. Everybody meant land. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. And then he gives us a proof the person who really owns the earth should be able to exit himself out and come back without any man's permission. So, when Jesus died, every other king that died could not come back. That's why when Jesus was about to die, those gates confronted him. They said, lift up your head and the gate said, who is this king of glory? In other words, we don't open doors for men to get back. That's why he said, the Lord, the owner, strong and mighty. He said, the Lord, mighty, lift up your head, O ye gates. 
The gate and the doors are you. They have voices. They can talk because they reply. They said, who is this king of glory? Why did the, it was a contention of gate and a king. Who is this king? It didn't say who is this savior. Who is this king? Who can go out and come back? Every man in the scripture who came back to life was raised by somebody else. Only one man raised himself back. And he's the king. That's why the Bible says, Who shall ascend to the seal of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Here's the qualification. He that has clean hands. Every king in the Bible had his hands soiled with something. But the Bible says there was a man tempted like every other man, yet without sin. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn. That means made a claim that he could not back. Sworn deceitful. As a result, he shall receive a blessing. What is the blessing? He will be called the king of the earth. Hallelujah. Hmm. He said, as long as I am in the earth, I am the light. This is not about making mouth. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Period and full stop. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to take over? Let's write quickly. To take over means, number one, to terminate the, the reign of the spiritual forces. Look at me, look at me, hold on. I need to explain something very important. Now, these demonic forces that function around territories, listen, they have access to what we call covenants. Covenants. Covenants give territorial spirits legal access. Are you listening to me? What are covenants? An agreement that was made with these spirits on behalf of land and people in the territory using a medium. Are you listening to me? So, uh, there, there, is, there is an instrument that we use to sustain covenants. It's called blood. Hallelujah. The voice that speaks in the realm of the spirit for a covenant is called blood. This is the reason why every time in your village and everywhere you go to a herbalist, there must be blood. Hallelujah. And according to what you want, different bloods of animals and so on and so forth have levels of voices they can speak. That's why there are certain things the herbalist will say, this one is past chicken or this one is goat. It's the blood of goat. The Bible says when Abel died, his blood began to speak. He spoke so loud that it reached the heavens. And God said, whose blood is speaking? And he looked and he said, Cain, where is your brother? I said, am I my brother's son? If I say his blood is speaking. When Jesus died, his blood spoke so loud, it reverberated the heavens and the earth. That's why all the kings, the priests, the Levitical priesthood and so on and so forth, every time they sacrifice a lot of things. Now you listen. These territorial spirits are maintained by covenants and periodic servicing. Are you listening to me? This is the reason why every year they call some of our parents to go back home. Come with a goat in your hand. Now they are tongue-talking believers, but they do not have understanding. They just say it's culture. There's nothing wrong. They go and throw, and it has to be a particular medium. You see the reason why kings don't sit in the throne of Nigeria. They sit till they die because they are medium. You don't vote them and after four years you say, oh guy, you have tried, go out, let somebody else come in. No. Even if they die, and do you know they live very long? The kings live very long because they always exchange something to sustain their life. In the Bible, two mothers ate a child, so let the child die so that they will be alive. So it is a spiritual principle that people give others in exchange for themselves. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Even the father, when he wanted many children, he sacrificed his only son so that he can get many sons into glory. Hallelujah. So, those covenants, there is blood speaking. Listen, please, I want you to understand this. Do you know that 
someone, this is what brings about what we know to be curses, generational curses, and so on and so forth. And a lot of people do not understand the context of Africa. There is no time I would have traced for you from Genesis 11 how Africa came about. Are you listening to me? Because the Bible says after the flood, suddenly in chapter 11, we see one great man. How he got great is questionable. Because he says, and a man called Nimrod Kush. He said he was a hunter. What was he hunting? Where were the animals? He didn't say he was a hunter of animals. He just said he was a hunter. And by some diabolical means, he became so great and a leader over many people. And this is the heritage of Africa. Our forefathers were hunters. I hope you know. All right, let me just... Let me just mind my business and take it cool and let's pray and leave. Oh yes! You look at America and you look at all of these nations. They are about 200 years old. That means one generation has died and gone. But the, you count just one or two generations in Africa, there was idol worship here. I don't care where you are from. You count one or two generations. They were smart people with spiritual intelligence. They, they knew how to manipulate spiritual laws and they made covenants and ordinances on behalf of people. So now, this brother comes and is born again. He's a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Yet, the covenants that were made on behalf of him and so on and so forth are still service daily. And the guy just gets born again and is moving up and down. And wonders if those things will catch up with him. I tell you, it will catch up with him. This is what the church doesn't want to hear. But you look at the lives of many people. They are praying in tongues. They are fasting. You fast over issues. The heavens are not open. Because there are lawful captives. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So there must be a higher covenant that is enforced in that environment to dislodge the legal claims of those spiritual forces and you can break free into a new territory. Our children, by the grace of God, will not need to learn all of these stories. But we are the ones who will pay the price. We are the bridge between a generation of abject idolatry and a new prophetic generation that God is bringing. And if we do not pay the price with intelligence, we will transfer this. This is the reason why the moment a woman is in that territory, the devil will steal her womb. Because the birthing of a new child is always a prophetic symbol of continuity. Receive a car in Jesus' name. This is what many people like. But the, the intelligence that will put you in command in life, many people do not want to receive. See, when you see a man reigning in a territory, there are laws that are understood. And if you do not know it, the Bible says you will die like men. men. <laughs> are you learning something? If many of our family members knew this, I tell you they will break free from the shackles of Satan. Now we just say, oh, you are born again and that's all. Truly. Except you want to lie to yourself. You know that's not all. lawful captives. This is why, the, it, listen, he said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but you choose life. He said, as for me, and then he spoke on behalf of his house. Question, why didn't they gather the people and say, you, son, are you interested? Daughter, he said, as for me, as the head of that territory, I speak on behalf of my house. We choose to bring our house under the governing influence of the spirit of the Lord. As for me and what? My house. So, what many believers do not understand is we have been trained to see that, oh, until you are found in fornication or in certain kind of things, and we preach all these things. Now, someone says, Me, I'm not sleeping around, I'm not doing anything. But why are things not working for me? What you need to understand is the devil does not just look at a person, he looks at a territory. And when God is dealing with people, He doesn't just look at a person. He looks at the territory. That was why when God looked at plenty of people in the Tower of Babel, He said the people is one. 
please, are you getting something tonight? Because we'll pray. So to conquer a territory means number one, to terminate the reign of spiritual forces over that territory. Number two, to invade the system and the structures with a new and a higher culture. Number three, to control the system, thereby enforcing the value of the king. Let me show you some territorial things and then you will understand. All of you look up. When Abacha was president, Abacha was the, the head of state, what happened? Did he die? Did he die? He died, correct? Who was the next president? Obasanjo? Abdul Salam? Is it not? Well, Abdul Salam was just interim. You wouldn't really say he was an elected president. Correct? When Obasanjo became president, who died next? His wife. Correct? Who was the next president that came in? The, who died? The man. Correct? And now the wife of the current president is sick. Do you see? Hallelujah. Number two, do you see the trend of what is happening in this country? That the deputies are taking the place of their governors. Suntai, the governor of which state now, is brain dead right now from what information we gathered. Yakoa, look at what happened to him. Governor Chime, the governor in Kogi state. You, you just sit down and wonder and say, wow, Nigeria is moving. But let me tell you the truth. If you are not strong, some of our parents are victims of these things and they do not know. One day you just see for no reason they return to your father. These people are spiritual. One of my friends used to work in a company. As graduates, they gave them 50,000. But the profits in the company collected 1.2 as salary. The manager is not an idiot. You don't be deceived by AIT and NTA. I'm teaching you intelligence. You really believe that this campus is just governed intellectually if you are still thinking that you better wake up tonight. Hallelujah. There is high classified spiritual activity that happens on your campus. I've had the opportunity to talk to all kinds of people. I've had the opportunity to minister to people by the grace of God. And I can tell you that I know this. And if you do not understand this, you may not reign in this life. Praise the Lord. There are some of you whose parents were supposed to be the next king, the next this. But because you gave your life to Christ, you left. And as a result, the man is just there praying two hours and saying, God will help me. And you are seeing the catastrophe of Satan around. But many people will not be humble enough to accept that I need the hand of God to get out of this predicament. I made up my mind to deal decisively with anything that does not look like God and to bring my territory under the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is very important. You must understand spiritual things. After my father, the next person who ever went to school was me. After my father. My elder sister, that's my younger sister there. My elder sister could not go to school. For years. And I kept wondering. I said, God, what is the meaning of this nonsense? I was praying in tongues. Filled with the Holy Spirit. I had even seen Jesus. Yet things did not change. Hallelujah. And by spiritual understanding, I opened that door and I said, no way. I'm going to stand as a priest and enact a new order in this family and in this territory. When my sister was about to get admission, she collapsed in the exam hall writing maths. They gave her economics and they say she can't get economics. I went back. I said, Lord, if I am in charge of this system, then my sister must get it. Of you sit down there and just allow things to ride over. 
publicity. Many pastors just sit down and just, you think publicity and so on and so forth and blessing people is just by pasting posters and doing all of these things. When you know how to take charge of territories, you will reign. Hear me when I tell you this. Bishop Oyedeko said when God told him that this was the place, he said for days he kept walking there commanding the forces to bow. Because he understood that there is spiritual intelligence. The Bible says you will not enter a man's house. Mark 3, I think verse 27. You cannot enter a man's house and just claim ownership. Except you first bind the strong man. This is Jesus talking. This is Jesus talking. That was why before the birth of Jesus, there was heavy intercession by two prophets called Simeon and Anna. They were clearing the way in the realm of the spirit. And until they saw him and their time was up. And even the man, John the Baptist, began to prepare the way. Are you learning something tonight? Because, see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you talk, I've had the opportunity to have people come to visit me. Right here on your campus, there are sacrifices that happen day after day, time after time. You don't know. It doesn't happen in your lecture hall. Hallelujah. He said, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. But many believers just sit down and they say, Oh Lord, we thank you. Uh -uh. It takes understanding. If you have not dealt with the forces in the spirit, you cannot do anything in the physical. Goko Haram, before any one of them go for any activity, they must receive assurance from the spiritual forces backing them that they will do it. That's why they come with such confidence and slaughter people and do everything. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I went to preach in a place in southern Kaduna and as soon as they lodged, they lodged me in, I just decided to rest. As soon as I placed my head down, suddenly a demon appeared to me. He said, what have you come to do in our territory? We are not disturbing you. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. And I said, in the name of Jesus, authority has been given to me. I operate by a higher law. And so I have come representing a government. And suddenly, it had a ripple effect in the people as they came for the meeting. You don't enter a place where there are... You see the reason why many people organize crusades and don't go back home safely. They enter and just preach. Say, I don't care any devil. And they have not settled these things. Come on. You reveal your identity in the realm of the spirit before you march in. The Bible says Jesus will pray in the morning. And the next day he will step into land. Immediately the demon seems to say, Ah, this is the guy we saw in the realm of the spirit. Don't let this body deceive you. We have seen you. He said, Jesus, I know. Where did they know him? Paul, I know. But who are you? Where do you stand? Many of you tonight, God is raising you because you have to take, before you take a bill, you must sort out your own life. And some of us may need to go and help our family members. You must dislodge the forces of wickedness that are at work. Let me tell you something. See, you don't need to offend Satan. Don't trouble Satan. Satan doesn't trouble you. That's nonsense. This is not something you will keep pressing on every day. But just like you got filled with the Holy Spirit at a time, you must take this seriously and clear the way for your life. Otherwise, you will struggle forever. Are you listening to me? This is very important. Many people do not know. You see, I thank God for the blessings that He has brought in ministry and other things. But let me tell you a little story. A day came in this city when I walked from the roundabout. You know the roundabout near Chicken Republic? I walked from there to aviation training tongues. The Bible says, everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given unto you. Don't you think anything just happens by magic? Hallelujah. If you are a man of the spirit, these things will not be foreign to you. I was praying one day and suddenly, praying, praying, bam, I was in the realm of the spirit. 
And I saw a demon spirit stand with an eyes like an owl. And then it had a tail that was a snake. And he looked at me. He said, you think you are going to release the body of Christ into blessings? Let us see. See, this kind of experiences are not for people who are themselves. It's a mandate to set people free. Praise the Lord. That's why there are certain people. Listen, if you understand this, you can live under a perpetual open heaven. So that when you step into a city, the forces around that city begin to create an effect. Someone has stepped in. They will know. That's why you can invite someone. You invite someone like Benifin into Nigeria and the atmospheric condition will pick up the signal. It's an anointing in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. And you must learn this. My grandmother was a traditional worshiper. A nice and honest woman. But when the masquerade came out to dance, they drank the beer close to her house. Now you get up and say you want to. You see, many of us were born in a nice private hospital with a wonderful bed. As soon as you finished, your mother was eating spaghetti, you were taking breast milk. And all these wonderful things. And so you do not know. Or many of us have come to school and now pretended that though nothing is happening, you hold on and don't take these things serious. And see the way, that's why many people, look at the graduates in Nigeria. First class, two, one, second class, third class, they are roaming around. Yet the Bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the west. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I ministered to a man who someone appeared to him in a dream and injected him with injection. And he went to the hospital and they said he's HIV positive from the dream. What is your concept of takeover? Cars and houses? What is your concept? When you talk of taking over in, in the campus, I want to ask you a simple question. What is your concept? It first starts with commanding the forces behind the activities on this campus to bow. There was a time when we understood this principle. And I tell you, the power of the enemy on this campus. And when many believers came in with all kinds of laziness, There was a time the things that are happening now would not happen. Because God has ambassadors. So tonight, you want to take over your life, your family, your campus, right? You've got to engage yourself in the place of prophetic prayer. Standing, knowing that there is the blood of Jesus that speaks above and beyond any other ordinance. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting that spoke against us nailed it to the cross. No devil can bring any curse over my life. No devil can inflict me. This is not just confession. When your confession is not born out of a depth of understanding and revelation, you are just a noise maker. Please, are you learning something? Because we are going to pray. Have a few minutes and I'll be done. In your faculty, I, I'm, I'm glad there are campus presidents and so on and so forth. When you pray, realize that for many of you, you think your enemies are the Muslims on this campus. They are not. This is the problem we have with many people. And this is the problem with many deliverance ministry pastors. They keep telling them, it's your mother in the village. It's not your mother. It's not your auntie. This is why I'm teaching you all these things. Because you will kill everybody in your family hoping that you are trying to find the devil. These are territorial spirits. Hallelujah. I was counseling a couple when the wife came and the, the man said, this woman used to slap him. I said, okay, calm down. It was becoming a thing of commotion and I said, just relax and we'll talk one after the other. And suddenly while they were talking to me, I just turned and I did not see the woman again. I just saw a man standing and I looked. You see, the moment you see things in the spirit, they are destroyed. Period. 
If there is a demon oppressing this guy, if I can see him in the spirit, that's it. Elijah said, if you can see me as I'm taking up, you will get something. Only if you can see. If you can see me. And Elijah kept looking. Not with his physical eyes. Suddenly, he saw chariots coming. He said, my father, my father. And I mean, in other words, I have seen it all. And the mantle dropped. He took it. He said, where is the God of Elijah? Hallelujah. And I just looked and suddenly I said, Thou foul devil. And while they were busy talking, the next thing, this woman who was gently sitting down, the next thing just turned into a wild animal and said, Leave me, oh. leave me, I, I'm not disturbing you. Me, yeah, I don't talk to demons. I don't have that time, that luxury of time. I had a lot of things to do. The Bible just tells us, Cast them out. Now, I'm not criticizing, I'm not criticizing people, but I'm saying you just cast them out. Because whatever they are saying is not relevant to me. Hallelujah. And then you sleep. If you do not understand this, students, there are some of you who are suffering things that are not your fault. But because you do not have spiritual understanding, the Bible says they know not. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Well, whether you take it or not, it doesn't affect me. I'm, 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 I'm saying this thing to help you. ABU will not be conquered just by having a Christian VC or having Christian HODs in every department. If that's what you are thinking about, you will fail. Because the Bible tells us many Christian kings who disappointed God. And Cyrus is who brought his counsel to bear. Once you dislodge the powers in the heavens, I tell you, you will ride gloriously to that territory. This must be the first. So winners, are you writing? Number one, you must engage in prayers for your life, for the campus. That's why God is raising different groups to pray and all of that. But all these pray for me, Lord, when will my wife come? Lord, I've been calling you. If you are not talking to me, I'm talking to you now. Respond. You must start thinking territory. Hallelujah. See, whenever you are thinking territory, then God will not anoint you. You know, many people want anointing. Many people have said this. People package all kinds of seed and come and kneel down and say, we want the grace of God upon your life. I tell the person, please get up and walk away. Because all these kinds of things, it's not about money. Are you ready to take the responsibility that comes with the anointing? Hallelujah. Except you don't want to serve God in sincerity and truth. But if you do, you must take over some territory. In the place of prayer. So right. Place of prayer. Many of you need to help your families. Take over that territory. One night. I went to court. Then the Lontanese court was open. And that was the day I settled it over my family. It was a, it was an, it was a time. A moment of heavy prophetic prayer. And I began to speak. I say I dislodged the powers of darkness. That gain whatever influence over my life and my family. And I tell you, it was like a joke. The heavens opened. Praise the Lord. And we are going to pray tonight. So you pray. The moment you pray, number two. Lord begins to prepare the army that will invade the systems when the power of the enemy is dislodged. Are you listening to me? Because when Satan is defeated, there must be a people who are already prepared, not being prepared. So the preparation starts. Now you study what I'm saying and see what God is doing in Nigeria. Are you seeing different groups, different ministries are already preparing addicted ambassadors? In music, in art, 
in sports, in ministry. Nigeria is in for a heavy shock. We are not ready yet for the things that God is going. God is using campus fellowship as a disguise, a school of ministry to bring many people. And then God is already raising intercessory ministries. A time will come when the powers of hell will be dislodged in this country and over families. This is why God is preparing many of us before this word comes. So that the moment you pray, you can step in and begin to legislate. You bring in a new order, a new culture, a new government, a new authority. Oh, nothing happens in my family anyhow. What? No, not again. When I was a child. I have become a gate over my family. Nothing just happens. I tell you, can you become this tonight? Over this campus. That every time anything bad is about to happen, that the forces of hell are gathering and say we are going to victimize students. Suddenly, God will raise a general. It's not everybody that will wake up. Certain people who have become like GPS, God's GPS. And he wakes you and says, Son, make a decree over this campus. And you walk around. God can tell you just walk around from social center to not get praying in tongues. People just see you strolling. They do not know that you are partnering with heaven to legislate the counsel of God. We need such kinds of people on this campus. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because many people's families have suffered. When you do that, you can now enter the system. But when you want to enter the system, you see a lot of students, um, okay, they don't do SUG again, SRC, faculty president, and student politics, and they get up. They are not serious. They don't know God. They just have Christian names. They say, vote me. And they don't win. I said, you will never win because you don't know what the people are doing. You just get up like that and wipe sleep from your eyes. That's what has gotten a lot of our parents into trouble. They say they are going to vote up, um, for the the, uh, what do they call them now? Union of your father's workplace. The colleagues are sacrificing people and babies. Our parents are not born again. They just say, I'm intelligent. They go and enter using brain and leave half paralyzed. What happens? Half paralyzed. They know not. Neither do they understand. And you start wasting all the money in your house trying to treat something that must be responded to spiritually. But the moment a general shows up in that family, he says, I see the handwriting on the wall. And while the rest do not understand, it is mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. And you prophesy and say, you have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to do the following. He started listening he said to open up the prison. What prison? Believe what I'm sharing with you. Because it will set you free. Many sicknesses are not sicknesses. Many challenges are not challenges. You write exam, your paper is missing. You are laughing about it. You think the solution is impartation. Say after me, territorial dominion. Stand up with authority. And you can legislate. Don't let things happen around you and just laugh about it. Many of us were taken to shrines who were dedicated. Many things happened to you. You just got, got born again and said, okay, no problem. I'm a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody is dying in your family and you are seen. If you don't do anything about it, the devil will eat up your life, I tell you. We're going to pray. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. I told myself, as long as I am in Zaria, the forces must bow. And I tell you, they will bow again and again without fail. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. It is not without power. They will submit themselves. The Bible says, be bold like a lion. Many of you, your gentility and ignorance is punishing you and your family. We are going to pray tonight. Because there are people who step into territory. ABU is a cheap thing. The devil has been defeated. If you attack this thing just by, let's rush. And no, 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 no. 
You wonder why they'll never allow a Christian student get first class. They'll never allow people. It won't happen. There are forces behind this wickedness. The Bible says they are called spiritual wickedness. See, when Daniel was praying, the Bible says when he was praying, the angel was already bringing his prayer request. And the prince, the power in charge of the territory of Persia, intercepted. And in the realm of the spirit, the prayer could not come. Until Gabriel, and he was there praying. Daniel did not go out to start insulting the king. He was praying. While he was praying, there was victory being wrought in the spirit. And the angel came and appeared. I said, from the very first day you began to pray, God had your prayer. But in the realms of the spirit, there were territorial influences. But through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemy submit to I made up my mind that any, 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 any territory I enter, whenever I enter, I speak to the heavens as an ambassador. And I say, servant of the Most High has come. And tonight, let me tell you something. We are going to dislodge some forces over your life in this place. Yes, this is why you came tonight. And then we will prophesy. Listen, if you know where you stand, you have the right to remove any lecturer or anybody that will not legislate the council of heaven. The Bible says they know not. Hallelujah. The person who tries to take my life, I'm even afraid for him. It's, it's, not, it's not for myself. One day I was driving... We're driving back from, from Abuja. And I passed something and I told my driver, I said, did you see that thing there on the road? It's a charm. And he laughed. I said, I'm not a demon, demon person. I'm just telling you. Do you know one car just came and passed and matched it? It wasn't up to 15 minutes. That car just moved in front of us and went and entered the ditch and died. I told him, I said, you see that? When you understand this, you will know that you can't die anyhow. Death is a spirit. It has an ear and it can hear. When the plane crash that happened, our condolences to all the families that were destroyed. I was going to Delta for administration. And so I was going to go through Kano to Lagos and then to Delta. When we got to Lagos, we could not land for over 30 minutes. I began to sense in the clouds that there's, there's blood, blood thirsty demons wanting blood. I hope you know that what happened in that plane crash was a demonic thing. It's blood in preparation for 2015. It's not like there are specific people just killed. There are... The bombing of churches that is happening, you people think it's jihad. It's not. It's just blood thirsty people who have been giving things. This is this God showed me the throne in the presidency of this country. I saw three legs and the head of a man was the fourth leg. Don't be ignorant, brothers and sisters. Don't be ignorant. You are in Africa. You are not in America. You are not in Europe. It's not for you to start thinking Satan, Satan, demon, demon. Uh -uh. But when it comes to your territory, you must take charge. For any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. Many of you have sat back and allowed the devil to have a convocation around your family. They are not born again. They are not filled with the Holy Spirit. But you are born again. Why would you stand up and do something? The day I knew this, I sounded a warning to the forces of darkness. I said, wherever you see me, you know it. And you go and ask the devil whether he knows me or not. I don't have time for nonsense when it comes to people. No, I don't. You must change your story. Someone says a door will not open up to you. It didn't open for your father. It didn't open for your mother. You come in with a new order. That's not the time to chicken out and you are waiting for one anointing service. Lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lifted. Oh, the ancient door. Don't let nice suit and Gucci and the rest lie to you. If you don't settle these things, you will be punished again and again in life. There are many ministers 
who start up ministry and do not know the forces that are at work in a territory. And suddenly you find out a man, two years in ministry, a scandal has come. Something has happened. That's how he chickens out of that ministry. He's anointed, but no spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Because we are going to stand up and when it's time to pray, I don't want you to pray. If you don't want to, you can leave. But you need to pray and say, Lord, it's time to first take the territory of my life and my family. I've allowed Satan to have a right. Yes, there may be legal holes, but I'm born again. There is the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. And I have no association with my lineage. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every nation. But if you don't enforce it, it won't happen automatically, my brother. It won't. It won't happen automatically. It won't happen automatically. And then you can begin to pray and legislate. Pray for your department. Pray for your lecturers. And say they are under the influence of the Holy Spirit for as long as I'm offering this course. Anybody that says students must fail, you say it's not. There is an influence above you that will compel you to prosper every student in my class. That's how to reign. Lord, you reign forever. Lord, you reign forever. I worship you. I worship you, Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign forever, Lord, you reign forever, I worship you, I worship you, one more time, Lord, you reign I worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh, my Father, you are bigger than what people say, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, you are bigger than what people say, Yahweh, one more time, Yahweh, Alabashatala Kaprande Katabela de Bokota, Rakata Pasa Prete Katabela de Bokoto Prakata, Mam Prataka Pale Kataba, you are taking over the territory of your life, the territory of your academic. The territory of Abihu, the territory of Zaria. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Every time you pray in the realm of the Spirit, listen to me. You are not, do not approach the devil like you are fighting. This is where a lot of people suffer and punish themselves for nothing. You are already standing in a position of victory. The Bible says in Job 22 verse 28, it says, And thou shalt declare a thing. Many of us pray, we ask God things, but you don't. He said, If thou shalt say, not to God, to this mountain, the mountain has ears. The prophet said, All oh, earth, hear thee the word of the Lord. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray. I like you to pray and say, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. The blood of Jesus speaks better things in my life. Go ahead and begin to pray. I'm born again. I'm born again. You are sounding it in the realm of the spirit. Come on, walk around and pray like a priest. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and behold, the new has come. 
I'm born again, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Maleketos kosekea, rapata kaprosa, lembreke seke tele koto supa, raposa la presia, embreke tele kaposata, makie tele kombiata, aprasa la ja seke tele kosa, mengie teka, raposa, mapasi ke tele kosupa, mapreke seke tele kosa, embrata tike le kosia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. He said, I'm bringing every thought, yes sir, to the obedience of Christ. You're going to speak, hold on, listen, you must speak like a king. You have the backing of heaven. I'd like you to begin to speak and command all the forces of darkness around your life and your family. I'd like you to declare and say, I come in the name of Jesus. Every mountain be lifted. Every covenant of darkness be broken over my life, over my family. I have no agreement with failure. I have no agreement with defeat. I'll be raised up above thrones, above dominion. Make sure you are praying. Let it slay in the name of Jesus. Command victory through the greatness of thy power. Will thy enemies submit themselves? Satan the Lord rebuke you. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates, be ye lifted, O oh, ye ancient doors. Over my life, over this campus, come on, pray. Over your family, I like you to pray. I break the hold of ordinances and covenants and everything, every act of witchcraft and divination. You are rendered null and void by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I set myself free. I decree and declare, it shall not have hold over me. The blood of Jesus takes me above. Make sure you are praying. I decree and declare, every source of death, untimely death, failure, Defeat, sickness. I command you be loose. Terminal diseases. Pray. Mataka palarabosha. Mam pretekete. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken from the prey. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. You shall not see the wind, you shall not see the rain, but the valley shall be filled with water. Behold, I set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. Where the word of a king is, there is power declare in the name of Jesus. Speak to principalities, speak to powers, speak to the heavens. I command victory for my life. Enough is enough. I release victory for my family. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. When it was time for the nation of Israel to invade Jericho, look at the strange and prophetic ways they took over city. God gave them an instruction. He said, go around the city. How can you go around solid structures? Something was happening in the realm of the spirit. And on the seventh day, he said, go seven times. After then, he said, the defeat is on. So in other words, when the realm of the spirit is settled, no matter how strong the problem is physically, it will fall when you run victories in the spirit. Lift up your voice and say, I will conquer. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. 
Say, Lord, I speak against strongholds. Pray in the name of Jesus over your ministry, over your business, over your parents. I contend with powers in the heavens and I wrote victory over your academics. My speech GPA must rise. This is not my life. This is not my result. I take over. 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 In your faculty, take over. This Lord, the power of wickedness. Pray for your department. Begin to command the forces to bow. Microbiology, medicine, engineering, faculty of art. Command the forces to bow. Command the forces to bow. Lift up your head in the name of Jesus. Let the final year students go. Let the final year students go. We command from the realm of the spirit. No more student victimization upon this campus. We legislate as the parliament of heaven. We enforce, we declare, we decree, we speak. Let the powers in the heaven, according to the mystery and the order of day and night, let there be a dislodging. For as surely as there's a night time, the morning arises. Let the womb of the morning be impregnated with breakthrough, victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, if you know the things that are happening in the realm of the Spirit, I know the things that the Lord shows me. Listen, are you ready to pray for your family now? Let me tell you the truth. I want you to stand and say, I'm an ambassador. And begin to legislate. Speak over the heavens. Command close heavens to be open. Lift your voice over your family. Command it. Command it. He said, Has thou commanded thy money? Command it. Command it. Command the heavens. Be open. Financial heavens. Be open. Marital heavens. Be open. Over my family. That cycle of defeat. That cycle of failure. Witchcraft and manipulation. This is launched by the power that is in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over my family. I command breakthrough. I command breakthrough. Miracles. Signs. Wonders. Angelic manifestations. I send angelic manifestations to my home. To my family. Let there be an operation of angels. Establishing. The victory that is in the world. For are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. <laughs> the light shines in the darkness. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus, you are Lord. Your light is shining, shining in. The darkness, Jesus. Many things are happening in family. Come on now, thrones and dominion being dislodged by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Hallelujah. Now listen, listen. The Bible says. In the beginning, Genesis 1, 
God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered round the face of the waters. Verse 3 says, And the talking Spirit said, Light be. This is what we are going to prophesy. Are you ready to prophesy? You are not praying to God. Take your position as a king and as a priest. Begin to speak over your heavens. Call the things that be not as though they were. Go ahead and begin to speak. I'm an excellent student. Winner's campus is moving from glory to glory. My family is breaking forth on the left and right. The siege is broken. The curse is broken. Make sure you are praying. For by thy words you are justified. By thy words you are condemned. He said, We having this same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. I command light to shine out of darkness. God, who has commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to reveal the knowledge of the glory of God as seen upon the face of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come on, decree and declare. I command the heavens open over this campus. Open over your department, over your faculty. Hallelujah. Look at me. I've taught you a principle tonight. We're rounding up. For anything you want to do in life, listen. For anything you want to do in life and any challenge you want to settle, you must settle in the realm of the spirit because it is only done in the earth as it is done in the heavens. If it has not been established in the heavens, it will not manifest here. He told Job, he said, Have thou commanded your money? Have thou commanded your money? He said, This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord made it. The Lord made it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Don't you accept anything to just happen around in your life? Listen, Christians, wake up. Take charge over the spirit. For as long as you are in ABU, you are the light of ABU. When you graduate, you can pass the button to someone. He said, for as long as I am in the world, I am the light. For as long as I am in a territory, I legislate. Every other force will give way for Christ the King. Final prayer point. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's transforming everything in obedience to Christ. He's recreating everything in obedience to Christ. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen, you're going to pray for your life and your family and say from today, I bring my family and my life legally under the governing influence of Jesus. Every other spirit that has been covenanted you are dislodged from tonight. Christ is the head of my life. Christ. That's the great confession of St. Patrick. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ above me. Christ behind me. Christ before me. Pray. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, I remember not the former things. I break free from the limitations. He said the children shall not suffer the iniquity of their parents. Satan get lost. 
be dislodged over every life. Come on, pray and crown Jesus Lord. You are Lord over my body. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Look up, please. Do you know many sicknesses are as a result of Satan wanting legal access to the bodies of people? The Bible says in the book of Jude that when Angel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? He found Lucifer fighting for that body too. Are you listening to me? And Lucifer said, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Satan contends over the bodies of people and he attempts to bring sicknesses. I was diagnosed for years with a fungal infection that could not be cured. My head literally became rotting. There was nothing they did not do with me. Listen, that which I have seen, that which I have heard, Jesus has appeared to me. He has given me understanding into these things. And if you don't take your place, you may die like a pauper in life. Do you know what it hold on? Do you know what it means to dedicate your body? Look up. When you dedicate a thing to a god or a deity, you have brought that thing to the control and surveillance. Are you listening to me? No matter where you go to, on legal ground, that deity has access to look at your life. And if anyone comes to collect it, it is the jealousy of Satan over the bodies of people that stop marriages and all these kinds of things. Because Satan seeks oneness with you, just like the Spirit of God wants oneness. And he will not want, just like God will not share you with anybody, Satan will not share you with another man or another woman or another thing. Hallelujah. But when you say, my body is dedicated to Jesus, they do what we call in many churches, child dedication. Unfortunately, that's just religious activities in many circles. But that you dedicate your spirit, your soul, and your body. What, is, what you are saying is, Lord, take complete charge of me. Be responsible. I tell you, no devil born in hell can take your life. No devil born in hell can inflict any nonsense sickness whatsoever upon you. You cannot gain victory if Satan has legal access. So right now you are going to pray and say, Lord, once again, you have my heart, my spirit, my soul, every member of my body. Doesn't belong to any habali. It doesn't matter what marks of Satan is upon you. Lift your voice and pray. I dedicate myself. The temple was dedicated unto God. Jesus was dedicated in the temple. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple. Your bodies, not just your spirit. Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, what fellowship has right got to do with darkness? What fellowship? To dislodge every terminal disease. I don't care what it is. HIV, AIDS, cancer, genotype, terminal diseases, heart condition, diabetes. They are just demonic manifestations with scientific names. Get that devil out of your life. I belong to Jesus. My voice, my life, my talent, my skill. Officially and consciously, I dedicate my life. I dedicate my life. Hallelujah. 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 
I want to pray for you. Many of you will be surprised at what will happen to you from tonight. You will suddenly find out that many things that were holding you down were because of these things. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you because you are prayed. I want to break you free from every yoke of darkness that is upon your life. I've had a burden for families in the last two or three months. It's amazing when God opens your eyes to see what Satan is doing in many families. And our selfish Christianity is not allowing us to take hold of this thing. But tonight I see victory. I see miracles, signs and wonders in the glory and the power. I see miracles. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. That the Lord will set you free tonight. Listen. Some of you will be very surprised. You may not know what is holding you down. Are you listening to me? Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Because you will go free. You will will go free. You will go free. You will go free. You will go free. (laughs) Lift your hands. Because I see what the Lord shows me in the Spirit. Father, as I begin to pray for you, the anointing of the Spirit will move across this place in a few minutes and set men free. Please make sure you open your spirit. Enough is enough. Are you listening to me? You are taking over tonight. I'm taking over. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every force of darkness and every foul spirit and everything that does not name the name of Christ over lives and over families in the name of the Lord Jesus lift your hands I command that power be broken now in the name of Jesus be broken now in the name of Jesus over your family be broken now in the name of Jesus be broken now. I set you free from ordinance of darkness and covenant and enchantment. Kaparikat, rapasataria, rapakatos opariadala, lekreskopaya. Be broken. I set altars of darkness. Karekatosa, repulsekalia, mampreketekelia, maproskata. Every devil having a legal hold over any life in the name of Jesus. Go. Now in the next one minute, Holy Spirit move across this congregation right now and set men free. Let the power of God blow from one side to the end in the name of Jesus. And every lawful captive, I command closed doors, Ephata, be opened in the realm of the Spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Kaleko Tosopa, be ye lifted up, ancient doors. I set you free through the greatness of the power tonight. Let every force over your life, your academics, your finances, your marriage, bow, bow, bow. I like you to shout the name Jesus one, one to go. One more time, shout the name Jesus. I prophesy, take territories in the name of Jesus. Academic territories be conquered. Financial territories be conquered. Geographical territories be conquered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every ministry represented in this place. I open new territorial doors. In the realms of the spirit. 
I invoke the forces of the Spirit to align themselves for you. Let there be open doors. I command every department and every faculty in Amadubello University by this apostolic unction. Let every closed door be open in the name of Jesus. Doors of admission be open. Doors of graduation be open. Doors of first class be open. Doors of 2 1 be open. Let missing strips be restored. I command financial doors. Favor with God, favor with man in the name of Jesus. And I pray right now from the Senate down to every faculty, down to every department. Let an angel as it were in Egypt move across this campus. Parakatosa, Rafakatalegeta, as the parliament of heaven. Let the angel of the Lord move through every hostel. Suleiman, Rifadu, Amina, Akenzua, the dam, the basketball hall, social center. Dislodge powers, dislodge powers, and for Jesus. I break the powers that are not of God. Wherever they be planted, whatever ordinance against this campus, I dislodge you. I release every fellowship into your prophetic destiny. Faculty of Art, blossom and rain. Faculty of Science, blossom and rain. Medicine, blossom and rain. Every ministry on this campus, and around this territory, the siege is taken. I release you to victory. Hallelujah. We pray for the management of this institution. Let the devil and the demonic forces, whoever will not subscribe to the government of God, tonight we dismiss them upon this campus from the Senate through every faculty, through every department. Hallelujah. Once again, let the heavens be open over this campus. Daniel, the Bible says, and the sun rose again. And he called the name of that place Daniel. The lost glory of the church. It will no longer be called Ichabod. But it will be called Pula, the place of beauty. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to the atmosphere over Amadu Bello University. Make the condition plain for the sons of the kingdom. We level every mountain and we command it to become a plain ground. In the name of Jesus, every resistance in your faculty, either to worship or to have fellowship, I command the forces, give way right now. I return the permission to every faculty, every department. No man can take it from you because the earth is the Lord's and its fullness. I speak to the earth to oppose any man on this campus that will not stand for heaven. O earth, hear ye the prophetic word of the Lord. Let there be an anointing upon the earth that will challenge every council either in the secret or in the heaven. Let the earth speak against every voice in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare to you that everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, upon this campus. I want to pray for the ladies. I hear they are victimizing you in the hostel. Katabakala Kabosa. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next three days, from the Senate, I influence a change in the ladies' hostel. Let it happen according to the word of the Lord. Let a decision be taken between today and Tuesday to begin to reallocate the ladies. I command it, I legislate it by the authority of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for the executives of winners. 
Thank you for putting this platform. Many of you may not understand what has happened. In the name of Jesus, let this fellowship be strong. Let the Lord strengthen your hands, President. Let the Lord strengthen the leader. I'd like you to go with this word that you are a king and you rule over your territory. Yes. Territorial dominion. When you stand in your hostel, you are not a second class citizen for any reason. It's not the issue of bragging. It is so. As you pass the walls of your faculty, lay hands on them and say for the king, for his counsel, lay your hands, you are anointed, and force the value system of heaven. Hallelujah. Call your family members. Speak over their lives. Speak over everything around you. Lay hands on your notebooks and command them to open up. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.